Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Games Done Quick Hot Fix on this fine Friday evening. My name is Adef, and I'm your host this evening for Challenger Approaching. Tonight on Challenger Approaching, we will have Goes on Ghost showing off Bloodborne Hitless. We're going to see two categories tonight. That's right, not just one, but two. So buckle in, get excited, get pumped. But really quick, as per usual, we have some announcements to start with here, so please bear with me. Summer Games Done Quick 2022 game submissions are open now until March 30th. You can find more information at gamesdonequick.com. I've submitted some games already. Have you? If you're watching on YouTube, go to twitch.tv slash gamesdonequick if you're interested in looking at our live content starting weeknights at 7 p.m. Eastern and weekends at 1 p.m. Eastern. And your subs, gift subs, and prime gaming subs and bits help support weekly hotfix content and shows like this. Please consider supporting our daily content if you enjoy these hotfix shows. Uh, so with that, gamers, I'm just going to give you a little bit of an intro here. Uh, we've had a couple of hitless runs on Challenger Approaching in the past. Just to name a few, we've had Skyward Sword. We've had Ocarina of Time. Uh, I believe we had uh, uh, Dark Souls 2, Dark Souls 3, and Breath of the Wild All Dungeons. So we've had some really fun showcases of hitless here and, you know, damageless hitless uh, here on Challenger approaching, and I'm really pumped for this. Uh, I hope you guys are excited because Bloodborne is one of my all-time favorite games. I love this game, and with all the Elden Ring hype going on right now, I couldn't help but get another Soulsborne title on the show. So with that, I'm going to throw things over to Goes on Ghost and Artie, who will be showing off uh, the run and commentary respectively today. Take it away. Um, hey. Uh, goes on Ghost. I've been no hitting Bloodborne since the end of 2017. Uh, team moderator for Team Hitless. Um, just like Artie. And yeah, I'm just excited to uh, showcase all bosses since that's uh, kind of an underrepresented category for Bloodborne. Uh, what's up, everyone? My name is Artie. As Ghost said, I'm one of the Team Hitless moderators. I am a Soulsborne challenge runner. I've done challenges on pretty much all the games in the series. And I'm just happy to be here today and commentate over Ghost's amazing run. Um, I will try to be very informative for you guys and we'll see how this goes. Fantastic. And Ghost, whenever you're ready, feel free to take it away. Okay. Uh, what should I start the countdown Whatever at? Whatever integer is your favorite integer under 10. Okay. Five, <laughs> four, three, two, one. Good luck. Have fun. Yeah. Let's go. What if I get hit? I just keep going. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, starting off... Um, right at the start of the game, you have to go out of the Josefka's clinic, which is the first building in the game, basically. And there's already an enemy that she has to deal with. So, you have two choices here. Most headless runners will choose to backstab the wolf and kill him with a visceral attack. And some people who are a little bit more crazy will just run and pray for the wolf to not get them. So yeah. Ghost decided to backstep there, got it first try, very good, and the run is activated. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Sometimes, Everything is downhill from here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Sometimes the, the wolf can backstep, can, he can dodge you, and it's kind of a meme. So thankfully with we're starting with the right foot here. It's so funny to me that, you know, the the beast is intended to be like a, an intentional death, basically, for casual players. Like, you're supposed to die there <laughs> in your first exactly. playthrough. There's even a fun fact about it, which when you when you die to the, to the wolf, you go back to the hunter's room and pick up your weapons, right? And then when you go out of the clinic, there's 10 bullets that you can pick up. Um, if Ghost had pick, picked up those bullets, um, she will have 10 right now. And when she picks up the, the Hunter's Pistol, she will not get 10 extra. 
you only get the 10 extra bullets if you pick up the the, the hunter's pistol before the bullets outside the clinic so the basically what i mean is the game expects you to die and there are mechanics right in the area that are um taking account for it so she went to the hunter's room there picked up her weapons um the saw cleaver which is the best weapon in the game by far i i'm sure ghost will agree with me oh yeah not the saw spear definitely not the saw spear yeah saw spear is for chumps <laughs> And now we're just collecting some materials, um, avoiding these enemies, which you don't have to think much about it, you just run through them. And we're going to the first boss in the in the run, which is Father Gascon. And this entire area is just picking up materials and getting ready for that boss fight. You can see the 10 Molotovs, some of them will be used in the boss fight. And yeah, there's not much to talk about here because this entire area is just running through. I think something if you... probably that I, I'd, I'd love for you to explain is the, uh, you know, I think a question a lot of GDQ viewers often have when we have uh, Soulsborne games on hit list is they're like, oh, but the runner took damage. Um, does that not count? So could you explain like what constitutes a hit? Of course, yeah. Um, fall damage which is something we have already seen in this run and we're gonna see it here right now again um fall damage does not count as a hit um self-inflicted damage does not count as a hit so for example if you use blood bullets in bloodborne basically your your character damages himself to get some extra bullets that does not count as a hit um running into traps or elemental um, like poison swamps and stuff that does not count as a hit either because it's just the environment and basically what is a hit is any stagger or damage coming directly from an enemy so if the pig had hit her right there that would be a hit um, if a, in Gascoigne's boss fight when he transforms to phase 3, he can stagger you and your character gets knocked down. You don't take damage, but since you get knocked down, that counts as a hit. So it's very peculiar, like some stuff doesn't count as a hit even um, if you take damage. Sometimes stuff counts as a hit even if you don't take damage, but it's... If, if you look into hitless runs for a while, you... You can see how it makes sense, everything. There's a great question in chat here from Ray, our producer, uh, asking, doesn't dying to environmental effects count as a hit, though? Yes, a death will always count as a death, uh, a hit, always. If it's from falling or poison, anything. If you die, you got hit. So here Ghost is fighting the first boss in the game, which a lot of people who are starting hitless runs, they get very demotivated about this boss because they, they think, well, it's the first boss in the game and I'm having so much trouble. And that's just normal. Despite being the first boss we encounter, Gascoin is definitely in the top 10 hardest bosses in the run. Maybe even higher up. And it requires a lot of practice to know all of his openings it requires a lot of time inside the fight. So Ghost here is just showing a masterclass of the fight with oil horns which double your fire damage. So you could see she, she threw a few oil horns and then used Molotovs and the Molotov dealt double damage. I there's a the fun little thing within the fight that so I, I got bad luck because it took forever for me to get a, a backstab in second phase. But if you get, if you use an oil or on gas coin in first phase or second phase, the oil will stay on his beast phase and you'll actually still get the double damage on the next Molotov, even though you've technically already used it up. 
when you first use the when you first hit him with the Mol Molotov and the oil urn in like human phase. GG, by the way. Thank yeah, you. GG. There's also a kind of a glitch. I'm not exactly sure if we would consider it a glitch, but you can throw a Molotov while Gascoigne is transitioning to phase three. And that Molotov will damage both his human form and as he transforms, it also damages his beast form. So if you time it correctly, you're gonna do double damage there. Yeah, because that's the uh, the uh, beast form is like moving from underneath the ground into the arena. Exactly. So Ghost just picked up the the armor that she's gonna be using for the whole run. Um, the reason why we use this pet is. Well, there's a few reasons. The first one is that it's really easy to pick it up. It's really early into the game. Oh, the dog? I don't I don't normally do this. I wanted <laughs> to do this in case I got bad RNG, <laughs> but I just ended up wasting a ton of multiple. No, that's fine. You saved it. Very good job. Um, so I just didn't want to risk like both the dog and the guy following me. Yeah. That was scary, but you dealt with it. Um, the armor set is really easy to pick it up. It has very good defenses. Um, and you're gonna ask me, but why do you need defenses if you're doing hitless? It's mostly for poison stuff, frenzy, which is a mechanic that will show up, show up later into the game. And just status effects in general. So it takes longer for those status effects to proc. And the third and most important reason is that that set is one of the best ones for your Beast Hood. And Beast Hood is a, a mechanic that I will explain in the next boss fight. But basically it just doubles your damage, maybe even more. There's a question that's coming up quite a lot in chat here, um, and I think the answer is yes. Uh, are, is DLC included in the all bosses category? Yes. Excellent. So, back in the day, we used to differentiate all bosses. Like, we used to say all bosses plus DLC if we were going to DLC. But recently, we started dropping those terms and we just say all bosses if it includes DLC. But if we're doing all bosses in the base game, we specify that and we say all vanilla bosses or all base game bosses so if you're if you're on a hit list screen or you're watching a hit list one and it says all bosses you're safe to assume it's going to include DLC. you know it's obviously i spend a lot of time watching speed runs and challenge runs and things you know not the least of which because i do them but also because i run these two shows and, you know, people are always like, oh my gosh, like, you're here so early. How did you get to this area so early? It's 10 minutes and you're in Old Yarnum is so funny to me. Like, <laughs> I feel like I, I had already played the game for like five hours when I made it to Old Yarnum. <laughs> yeah, that's... The, the difference between the experience, um, between a casual playthrough and a challenge run or a speed run is just massive. You're... But as the game progresses, you're just going to be more and more impressed. Especially when Ghost enters DLC. Like, one hour into the game, a little bit A little more bit, like, yeah. like an hour ten. One hour ten. Some people get to the DLC like 50 hours into a playthrough. So. Right. Um, I, uh, there's also uh, some people are asking about if, if Ghost takes a hit, will she reset? Uh, the answer is no. Uh, challenger approaching is kind of about just like displaying uh, the run as a whole. So, you know, ideally Ghost is able to complete the run without taking any damage as she has before. Um, but since this is a showcase and you can't reset, it's much more difficult for that to happen. And, you know, performing in front of all of you obviously is quite hard. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll keep a running tally of hits, but ideally that counter just stays at zero. Yeah. Um, Ghost just picked up the most important item in the run. It's 
one of the most broken items in the series, the Beast Blood Pellet. So, as this fight goes, I'm just gonna explain it because it's a little bit complicated. Casual players um, don't really understand the mechanic. Even challenge runners sometimes don't really understand how it works. So, the Beast Blood Pellet is a consumable, as you could see there. Ghost just used the item and a bar showed up above her, above her head. And what this bar does is, we call it the Beast Hood Meter. As you attack enemies, you're gonna see that bar filling up. And the more it fills up, the more damage you deal. So if the bar is just showing up, basically, you're already dealing 20% extra damage. When it gets to 50%, um, you're like, it's not perfect. Um, the amount of damage that you're get, you're gonna get as the bar fills up. But basically, as it fills up, you're gonna go from 20 to 30 to 40% to 50%, all the way up to 70% extra damage. And it's 70% extra damage on your hits is just insane. It, it, it allows you to stun lock bosses to death. It allows you to make bosses um, completely scripted in some cases. And without this item, this run would be so much harder. It's just... GG. And, <laughs> yeah, GG Ghost. Thank you. And the, the downside, which doesn't matter for hitless runs, is that when your Beast Hood meter goes up, your defense goes down. So you can get all the way up to 70% extra damage, but you're also gonna get minus 80% defense. So a lot of people just doing a casual playthrough will stay away from this item because they don't want to take extra damage from bosses. But for challenge runs, it's perfect, especially for hitless, since we, we don't plan on getting hit anyway. You might be seeing me messing around with my uh, gestures. You want to explain the gesture system in this game, Artie? <laughs> yeah. So, the controller, the PS4 controller, it had a new mechanic, I guess we could say, which is using the motion um, to do in-game stuff. And somehow, from software, thought it was a good idea to apply that to Bloodborne. So, if you press X and then you kind of move your controller around, you're probably gonna um, perform in emotes. And that is terrible for challenge runs because sometimes you're just going through 50 enemies at once and maybe you just press the run button uh, or move your controller differently and your character just sits down randomly and you die. So it's something to be aware of. Um, the way to avoid this is to just never spam X um, because if you spam X the the game assumes that you're holding X and then you get the motion gesture so yeah it's a pretty messed up mechanic and it has definitely killed many hitless runs before including yes. mine and including ghosts mm -hmm. so what I'm doing is like mix is like switching them around so the least bad gestures are the ones I'm most likely to do if I do set off a gesture. That is very smart. Um, I've seen mostly speedrunners doing it. I personally don't do that, which means if I get a gesture, it's usually my character just sits down and I accept that I'm dead. <laughs> yeah. You're not even able to cancel the gestures. It's just all around a terrible feature. It's, yep. it's a moment to reflect. When, you're, when your yep. character sits down, it's just an opportunity to say, wow, what a, what a deck of cards I've been dealt. Now, fun fact, Elden Ring also has uh, motion gestures, but you can go to the menu and turn them off. But, but yeah, that's not a thing in Blueburn, so <laughs> we just have to deal with it our own way. So here's Amelia. It's a scripted boss fight. As you're going to see, Amelia will not do anything to Ghost. He cannot touch her. Those are very specific combos. It looks hard, but 
once you practice, um, this is a hundred percent consistent, even more than hundred percent. It's fairly hard to mess up if you practice this a lot. But it, it, at first, it's a very tricky strat to learn. So that's probably the first attack that Boss has done. But Ghost, as I said, it's scripted. Ghost basically lets the boss do those attacks. Um, and she knows it's coming, so it's easily dodgeable. GG, very nice. Thank you. Earlier, I, I, I've always like wondered if this is how, I assume this is how it works, but you know, I've seen Bloodborne speedruns and stuff. When people use the Hunter's Mark right after killing the boss, but before the Blood Echoes pop, I assume you don't lose them because the game hasn't like counted them yet? Actually, um, if, you, if you use um, a Hunter Mark and don't get the Echoes, you actually, the fight does not count as you winning it. You actually have to fight the boss again. Yep. Really? If you yeah. don't get the Echoes, you haven't killed the boss. The boss, if you go back there, the boss will still be alive. Now, what happens is either... So, Ghost used the Hunter's Mark on um, Lost Heart Beast, but she used a bold Hunter's Mark, which doesn't... Actually, I used the regular one on BSB. Oh, you used the regular one? Yeah. Yeah, so Ghost lost all of her Echoes on BSB, but she had to wait until she got the Echoes, and then she lost them. Okay. Also, something important that we missed is Ghost went to the workshop tower and she grabbed the doll set, which is gonna sell now for 35,000 blood echoes, and it's gonna get her a lot of free levels early in the game. And oh, she's gonna go later. <laughs> yeah, plus and six shadows. She, yeah, and she also grabbed um, the umbilical cord and the umbilical cord is important for two reasons the short-term reason um, is that in early game you need insights to be able to buy upgrade materials so you can see ghost has 16 insights that means she can buy exactly 16 bloodstone shards and that's exactly enough to get her to a plus three weapon so we use the umbilical cord early because it gives you three insight and it gets you to exactly 16. And the second reason, which is a long-term reason, is you need to use three umbilical cords over the course of the game to be able to fight the real final boss, the true final boss. So he, she killed the dogs because otherwise they would be let out of the cage and they would hit her as she got the blue elixir. And the blue elixir is also one of the most important items in the run because it makes your character invisible. Enemies can still hear you, but it's much harder for them to actually track you. So you can do what she just did. In that case, you can just run through enemies and they won't touch you. In most cases, at least. So this makes Bloodborne Hitless much, much safer. A few people have done Bloodborne Hitless without consumables, which includes no Beast Blood Pellet, no Pungent Blood Cocktail, and no Blue Elixirs. But those people are crazy. <laughs> They're just too good. Have you ever thought about doing that run, Ghost? Yeah, probably will. Yeah, of course you will. <laughs> <laughs> now Ghost has to manage her stamina here because this cannon can be a little bit of a meme. If you don't manage your stamina here perfectly, sometimes the, the cannon can shoot a bullet that will not go all the way through. And it's just gonna hit you um, like as you run. It's really messed up. It's something that takes a little bit of practice. And even Here if you, you and even if 
you do it perfectly, it can still just glitch out and give you like a shallow shot. Yeah. Here, you got the very good attack there on the bridge guy. Um, that enemy on the bridge, the guy with the snake head, he, I personally consider him one of the most dangerous enemies in the game. Um, but that was a very good attack, very easy to dodge, very well played. And now Ghost is just picking up more materials, because she's gonna get a plus six weapon for Shadows of Yarn. Now, what is the what is the ruling for for glitches in the Hitless community? I know for the most part they're okay, um, but will we be seeing the Shadows of the Yarnum sort of freeze glitch thing? No. Um, so glitches are mostly banned, actually. Okay. Interesting. Except for so, if it's a major glitch like freezing a boss AI or going out of bounds, we don't allow it. But if it's something that makes sense, then we usually hold a vote between members and we decide to allow it. So in the case of Bloodborne, we do three skips that are considered glitches by the speedrun community. But as a team, we decided to vote and accepted them into the game, into the run. Um, one of them is hitting the brain sucker through the wall in Upper Cathedral War. So there's an enemy very close to a wall. If you get a weapon with a long range, you can hit him through the wall and kill him. And then you get a key, which means you don't have to go through the entire area. We're not certain if that's intentional by the game devs, which is why some people consider it a glitch. But since it just makes sense, we allow it. And the other two glitches that we allow is, well, we don't really consider them glitches, but the other two skips is the Lunar Key skip and the Lecture Hall skip. I don't think Ghost will do either of them. But basically you just use the enemies or the, the environment like hitboxes to perform a jump that is higher than usual. And that jump allows you to go through um, a rail or something and you skip an area, basically. So it's just using the environment to your advantage. If, if you have played Dark Souls 3 before, and you go to Firelink Shrine, and there's the, the tree skip, um, anyone who has played DS3 knows what I'm talking about. In Firelink Shrine, you can jump up on a tree. You can use a tree to jump higher than intended and go um, to an area a little bit earlier than the game intended you, which also skips a key. That is basically what we do with the skips that are allowed here. So are you gonna do Lunar Key Skip, Ghost? Uh, I will pass on that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very tricky skip, to say the least. I know I, I speak for all of chat when I say I, my eyes are glued to the screen. Um, I mean, I, I love this game, but also this is a, a tremendous showcase so far. So great job, Ghost. And Artie, excellent work on commentary so far. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great job, so we, yourself. We are approaching <laughs> oh, one of the biggest <laughs> bosses for any percent in terms of Hitless. Yeah, I would say personally, this is top three hardest boss in the run and he is very they are very early into the game it's a gank boss it's three enemies at once and it, it just speaks for itself let's see the ghost used the beast blood pellet here going for the charger too she gets a lot of uh, beast hood meter there, so her damage is a little higher right now. So the goal in this fight is... There's a few triggers for different phases, like phase 2 and phase 3. But 
when it comes to hit list, the goal is to generally generally most people get the fireball shadow um, to about 40% HP and the katana shadow to about 40% HP as well. And we just leave the, the one with the candle alone because it's unnecessary to hit him. So Ghost is just chipping down on the fireball shadow here. And when she gets an opportunity, she hits the katana shadow, which is the most dangerous one. He's very aggressive. And so this is why the fight is really hard. There's three enemies. Sometimes one of them gives you an opening, but then you have to manage your camera to be able to look at all of them. Thank because you. Maybe you're getting an opening, and you, you take it, and then, boom, you get a fireball to your face. So you always have to have all three of them in your camera at the same time, in your field of view. There's a very good question in chat, asking if you can't visceral. Um, oh, if you can't get hit in a visceral. Yeah, you cannot get hit in a visceral, but viscerals are very dangerous in this fight. So a visceral is just like a repost in Dark Souls games. You'll get iframes during that animation, which means you can't get hit. But as soon as you leave that animation, your character is weak again. Um, and susceptible to hits. So if you're very unlucky, you're gonna take a visceral. And right as you as your iframes go away, you can get hit. There are enemies that sometimes can instantly hit you, like frame perfect, and you cannot dodge it. So we just avoid doing viscerals in this fight. So both shadows are set up here. Ghost is gonna buff, and she's gonna try to burst one of them down. I think she's gonna choose the fireball one, because he has less HP, and it's easier to kill him. This hit puts them in the phase transition. So the fireball guy is dead. Now she's in a 1v2. Which, uh, oh my god. <laughs> that was very fast and GG. That, that was fairly hit. close. That One hit. of the attacks. Oh my god, the roll on the candle guy in phase <laughs> yeah. two yeah. is absolutely <laughs> disgusting. That was a very good roll, very... That was a... Uh, Pretty much a text, but um, Shadows of Yarn. Very well played, GG. Thank you. That hurt my soul. <laughs> the 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 last second roll as the as the candle guy came in. Real genuinely, I had a heart attack. Yeah, I and have, that is. I have done that like so many times, which is why I <laughs> went for it. That is exactly why we set up both of the shadows before phase two. Um, phase 2 transition is a very long animation, so you can kill one of them during the transition and as you kill them, you turn around to kill the other and she, uh, th the other shadow is going to be low HP, so you can just be very aggressive and kill it as fast as possible. The goal is to just be on a 1v1 ASAP. So here Ghost gets the Lunarian key. He used a blue elixir to avoid the NPC hunter. Which went down the stairs. Here she talks to Master Willem just to get a few insights. And we're going to Rom. Uh, I would like to very quickly plug the runner. Uh, please, if you enjoy Bloodborne challenge runs, hit you know hit this for all bosses, any percent, etc. Challenge or uh, chalice dungeons and everything like that. Please do follow Ghost at twitch.tv slash goes on ghost. The link is in the chat. I'm posting it pretty intermittently throughout the run. And uh, check it out. Yeah, so Rom is another kind of a gank boss. Um, the little spiders are not the boss itself, but 
since there are multiple enemies in the in the fight, I guess we can consider it again. And I I would say this is probably one of the most hated bosses in the series by a lot of people. It's very hard to find someone that enjoys um, Ron, but I personally do. I don't. I'm not sure about Ghost. Um, I'm I'm partial to Ron. Yeah. So in this run, Ghost has a lot of damage already. She leveled up quite a bit from the ball set, and she also gets has a plus six weapon. So what we're gonna see here now is Ghost is gonna switch her weapon to her fist and she's just gonna whack at her head. Just hit her head multiple times and you can see the beast on meter right above her head going up. She's gonna keep doing this until it goes to uh, basically 100% which means her damage will be at maximum. It actually maxes out a little bit before a 100% bar, but we just do it to make sure. Now she buffs with the fire paper, and this is a very specific combo. Um, Rom backstab, which is not unusual to say the least. And nice. This was not a one cycle, which is what Ghost was trying to do, but Rom still got very low. And she has five Molotovs left. So now we're gonna see a sniper gameplay. This ghost will stay far away from the boss and just try to kill it with Molotovs. There's the first one. It's a hit. Very nice. So we have to constantly keep moving to avoid those meteors. Okay, that's a wasted Molotov. Oh, oh, nice. He hit the ground, but Rom fell right on top of the Molotov, so it still dealt the damage. And now the last one. So, 3, 4, 4, I guess. Very good. That's a good accuracy right there. <laughs> I love that you described it as a, a sniper battle. <laughs> that's very funny. Yeah. That's a very um, common strategy for BL4 runs. And BL4 is basically minimum level. The lowest level you can possibly be on Bloodborne is if you start with the Waste of Skin class and you start at level 4. So if you don't, a BL4 run is basically you'd never level up. You start with that class and you never level up. And in that run, you don't have enough damage to one cycle ROM in most cases. So we usually do this Molotov strategy. So this is a very scary area in all possible ways. The design is pretty scary, but also enemy placements, um, enemy aggressiveness in general. So there's a lot of you have to take into account when going through this area. Here you can roll into those enemies to stagger them. Now Ghost gets the upper cathedral key, which gives us access to UCW, the upper cathedral ward. which holds two extra bosses. So it's, it's necessary for the all bosses run. She uses a blue elixir to get through those enemies and also the staircase, the dreaded staircase full of enemies and a laser, a very deadly laser. But if you use the blue elixir, it's pretty chill, very easy to go through. I feel like you never see somebody in this area with this low amount of insight. That is true. <laughs> a lot of people get to this area with like 30 or more insight. But as I as I said before, um, we use insight a lot in this run to buy items. 
um, upgrade materials. At some point, we will also be able to buy Beast Blood Pellets and Blow Elixirs with Insight. So, I will be surprised if Ghost Insight will ever go above 25. Oh, it's it will go be above 25. Yeah. So it's always going to be quite low. So this next boss is an optional boss. It's called Dark Beast Borrow. And much like Vicar Amelia, he won't do anything. He basically cannot touch you. And it's a very fun boss to watch. So Ghost uses the Beast Blood Pellet here and just spam the box as it wakes up. And that's the fight. Fight is over. As soon as the boss goes down, you just circle him and break all of its legs. It's always gonna stay on the ground. And that's a GG. Very quick, very easy fight. Adaf, can you take it for a moment here? I'll be yeah, right back. of course. I'm I saw someone in chat so asking if I'm going to switch my trick weapon, and that is a no. I'll be sticking with the cleaver the entire time. Yeah, it's interesting. I feel like when I watch Bloodborne streams, people are often like, why don't you use a weapon other than the saw cleaver? And like, oh, is the saw cleaver really that good? It's like, yeah, the, the default weapon that they give you in this game is so powerful. Um, the saw cleaver, especially when upgraded, I think that's also something people don't recognize all the time, is that like upgrading your weapon in some cases in Soulsborne games is actually more valuable than leveling up your player. Um, and so I think Ghost is at what, like plus six saw cleaver right now? Yes, plus six. Um, and soon, you know, she's grabbing bloodstone chunks and, and, and everything like that to get it even higher. Uh, the saw cleaver is amazing. And the, the L1 form, the like, the, you know, long stabby form of the saw cleaver is also really good for combos. Uh, an interesting part of Bloodborne running that you don't see in a lot of other uh, Soulsborne games is that the order in which you do attacks matters a lot in Bloodborne. So like when Ghost is fighting certain enemies, you'll see her do like an R1 and then, you know, switch the weapon into a different form and then attack again. Um, and so it's a really, really cool, uh, fast-paced, interesting uh, mechanic. And the Sock Lever, it, both forms of the Sock Lever are just great. Okay, I am back. So Ghost here is going to pick up a very important item for the run, the Tempering Dem Blood Gem 5. It's a blood gem that gives you plus 18% damage. So her attack power is about to go up by quite a lot. After this boss. Next boss is One Reborn. Um, I would say this boss gives Hitless Runners a lot of trouble. Especially when they are starting their practice. But it's pretty consistent. It's just weird to deal with and it requires a little bit of practice and knowledge. What I personally find to be the most optimal is just to go as fast as possible so that you get good cycles on his attacks. So here Ghost waits for the first hit attack basically. And now she should be safe to kill all the other bell ladies. And we have to kill these bell maidens that are up in the balcony because if you just go straight for the boss, they're gonna keep shooting fireballs at you during the whole fight. And that's not very optimal for a hitless run. One thing you might notice with no hit runs and speed runs is that they often like use very similar strats. The one reborn strat for the speed run and the no hit run are like night and day though. Yeah. Speed runners it just go straight to the boss and bam him down. In a very specific way, mind you, but 
Yeah, they don't care about getting hit by the fireballs. And that's the fight. Um, much like Barl, which Ghost just killed, this boss is just a matter of breaking his legs and he never gets up from the ground. These combos are a little bit specific, but not... Uh, it doesn't really matter that much. As long as you deal damage to the boss and you don't let him get up from the ground, then you should be good to go. This was a boss casually that I had to come back to. <laughs> like, I remember I, I was I was struggling with it, so I left, did some like I think I went and killed Amygdala or something, and then came back to this. Yeah, this boss is kind of a DPS check. As I said, you need to be able to deal damage to break all of his limbs and never let him get up. If he actually goes to his second phase and starts like dropping corpses onto you and vomit on, on the ground. It's, by the way, it's a very disgusting boss. Um, if you get to that point, it, it becomes a very tricky fight to deal with. So we just do our best to avoid it altogether. So a couple of cool things not necessarily related to Hitler's runs, but first of all, yesterday was Bloodborne's seventh anniversary, so claps to Bloodborne. Um, Maybe one day it will it will come out on personal computer or some other console. <laughs> <laughs> can you oh. repeat the loop if one reborn heals the limbs? You actually can. You have to run around the uh, arena a few. Uh, like kind of like like once or twice to like reset the a the AOE. Yeah, because the AOE is the best opening kind of for you to go for the the limb staggers. So yeah, I just go around the arena a few times. So yeah, um, Lowbarn's birthday was yesterday. Maybe one day on PC. Maybe one day 60 FPS. Who knows. <laughs> We're still struggling with the 30 FPS help. over here. Yeah. And the second one is, I, I've seen someone mention in chat that they should replay Bloodborne. Um, Return to Yarnum is an event that happens every year and it's about to start. It's gonna start now in March at some point, not exactly sure what date, but Return to Yarnum is basically a an event held by multiple communities, like Discord, Reddit, and stuff. And players that have beaten the game multiple times are gonna go back, and they're gonna revive the online gameplay. So this is as good of a time as ever for you to go back to Bloodborne. It's, it's about to become very active for the next few we weeks. And one of the few boons of being on a PS4 is that you're less likely to deal with um, hackers. They still exist, but yes, less that likely. Is a, that is that a is current true. issue for some from soft titles. Yeah, hackers still exist, but it, it's pretty rare. Oh, and we have our first bit of frenzy. Yeah, true. Okay, so you can see a bar above ghost head right now it's similar to poison bar filling up in dark souls games or even bloodborne itself but this is a new mechanic uh, specific to bloodborne it's called frenzy and when that bar fills up you instantly lose like 70 percent of your health so you have to be very careful with it there's a few different enemies that can trigger it um, that includes a few grab attacks, I believe. Um, Winter Lanterns, which is the weird ladies with the giant heads. And this area, specifically. So in this area, you can get Frenzy just by walking through the area. 
And Frenzy is countered by having a good armor set that has good defense against Frenzy, like this one that she's using. And also by having low insight. So if you have 99 insight, for example, which is the maximum possible, you're gonna get Frenzy much faster than someone that has zero insight. Um, and someone asked if Frenzy counts as a hit. If it procs, so if the bar completely fills up, yes, it counts as a hit. But if you, as it fills up, you actually take damage sometimes. Um, it's not every time, but as it as it's filling up, if you take damage, we do not count that as a hit. We just count as environmental damage, kind of. But if it procs, yes, it's a hit. Now we're going to Mikalash, the favorite boss of the, every single player ever. Everyone loves this guy. So Mikalash is a little bit of a gimmick fight. You have to chase him around the arena while his puppets try to kill you. And if you do the correct sequence um, of chasing him, he will go into this room and you can fight him in there. Or you can stay at the door and lure him out to this small corridor where it's even easier to fight him. He is being a little bit of a troll right now. He doesn't want to come out. I was attempting to shoot him earlier to like prevent him from doing this, but I hit the yeah. wall instead. Yeah, you hit the wall. I don't I don't even know how that happened. That was weird. Okay, so Mikolaj is in the corridor. Now Ghost just combos him. She does a combo, then strafes the tank tentacle attack and another combo and finishes off with a charger too to get him as low as possible into phase two. Now phase two we kind of do it all over again you have to chase him until he goes to a specific place you can hit him and there's that. And there's also these blood sun chunks which are pretty important for you to get a plus 10 weapon. Why is the corridor easier? The corridor is easier because Mikolaj has less space to move around. So you can, oh, yeah, you can, you can corner him against the wall, which means he cannot dodge you. Is that right, Ghost? Yeah. Also, it just in the uh, large room there are two of these puppets that you don't want to deal with. Yeah, exactly. So if you don't go into the room, they don't wake up. So you just fight the boss himself. But if you go into the room, you have to fight the boss and two puppets at the same time. Now, Ghost will do a pretty cool strat. It's a little bit specific, but should be consistent every time. You drop into him, plunge, you basically pancake him into the ground and he will not run away from you, basically. And now she has to try to fight him in here. Because he somehow dodged one of the attacks and got away with it. He's almost dead, though. Very nice save. Very nice save. Good job. Thank you. So, Ghost, I have a question now. Okay. Why did you hide behind the wall there? So there is a puppet in that, like in that little room I'm in. If you, if you're in that little corner where I was, he won't get up. Like you're, you're far enough away from him to not aggro. And it also breaks Mikolash's line of sight so that he has to like walk over to you and then you can just basically ambush him and attack him. And that is incredible. Often he will like to, he likes to hop back or use a, an auger because you're so close to him. Or sometimes he'll punch, which is the worst thing he can do. Yeah. Ghost, how would you feel about taking the first break after wet nurse? That sounds like a good idea. Sweet. So people in chat might be wondering, wow, but Mikolesh didn't do his most dangerous attack there. 
Um, and Ghost just explained exactly why it didn't happen. She was out of his line of sight and she also tried to stay as close to him as possible when he wasn't, uh, when she was in sight. Um, which means he couldn't use the... What's the attack call again? A call beyond. A call beyond, exactly. So a call beyond is dodgeable. Uh, a lot of people seem to think it's undodgeable, but it's dodgeable, it's just very tricky and you would hate to see it in a run. So Ghost was hiding from him there and trying to stay close as well so, he, so that he wouldn't do it. And now for one of the biggest killers of runners and <laughs> casual players alike. Casual players probably remember this place. I know I died to, it, to this elevator dozens of times in my first playthrough. But yeah, we have to go here in order to get um, another blood gem, which is also plus 18% attack power. And we also need a blood, a blood rock from here, which will make us able to upgrade the weapon to plus 10. Here Ghost takes a very specific path to avoid those enemies. Those are very dangerous enemies. And they also trigger um, Frenzy, which means she has to keep using sedatives to be able to counter the, the buildup from Frenzy. This is one of the hardest areas in the game casually, because a lot of people go into here without blue elixirs, without sedatives, um, not knowing where to go because it's kind of a maze. So, and there's also the elevator. So most casual players or people who have only played um, a first playthrough or something probably die here multiple times. So now, Ghost pretty much has every material she needs. She has all the good gems and enough material to get a plus 10 saw cleaver. And from now on, it's all about just leveling up. So do you not have to kill the like big brain thing in the basement? You do no, not. No, you don't. Only reason, I do that when I'm doing my what is it? Uh, all achievement runs all because achievement. you need it to get the living string for the final chalice, but we are absolutely not going into any chalices today. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, when you kill that enemy, you get a, an item that lets you go into a, a specific chalice dungeon. But since we don't do those and it just runs normally, right, Ghost? <laughs> oh, normally no. we don't do that unless you're Ghost and Ghost. Um, we pretty much never go there. And now we're going to the last boss in any percent. Where goes Wet Nurse? It's a little bit of a mean boss. Um, it's, it's not really the best AI ever. There's a few things that you need to be aware of, but... With the amount of damage that Ghost has right now, this should not take very long. So the strat for this boss is to stay away and bait the attacks and then run in and hit the boss. Because if you always stay close, there's a few attacks that can clip you. And there's a few glitched attacks as well. I'm not sure if we're gonna see the lawnmower but Wet Nurse has, has an attack where she basically just wails all of her scythes um, as she walks. And we call that the lawnmower attack. And that attack can be glitched and it comes out instantly. It has no wind up at all. So that is pretty much the number one reason why we always pay her attacks from far away. You can see Ghost baiting an attack, walking in to bait the continuation of the combo, and then walking in again. 
This is basically just manipulating nice. the AI. Very nice. Let me know when you're ready to uh, to pause the timer. Okay. We can probably yeah. do it as soon as we enter the hunter's dream. Okay, great. Yeah. And that was a um, clean any percent. Yeah, I believe this is the first hitless run in the event, right? Yeah, I guess I guess if that's if that's uh, any percent, then that's the first completed, you know, <laughs> hitless thing on Challenger approach. <laughs> yeah, that is any percent done. Excellent, Pog GG. Champ. Let's uh, let's get some GGs and some follows for Goes on Ghosts. Uh, the link is in the chat, and we'll pause the timer here in I don't know five, four, three, two, one. Pause. Excellent. Uh, you good with that, Ghost, to go into yep. our first break here? Excellent. So we're going to go to a quick break here, everybody. Take an opportunity to get up, stretch your legs, uh, and get a glass of water, and we'll be right back. Though any percent is technically finished, there's a lot more Bloodborne still to come. we got to finish this run and get the all-bosses category complete. And then after that, there will be even more Bloodborne after that. So stick around, everybody. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a few moments. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the game's Unquick Hotfix. This is Challenger Approaching. I'm your host, Adef, and uh, we have Goes on Ghost showing off Bloodborne Hitless. We just had the first segment of the All Bosses run, uh, which is technically any percent, uh, and it was Hitless. So big congrats to Goes on Ghost. Please check out her Twitch channel. Uh, but we have more Bloodborne Hitless coming up with the conclusion of the All Bosses run, and then an interesting any percent run after that. But first, some announcements. Gamers, Games Done Quick Highlights is a channel that features highlights of our GDQ Hotfix shows. Use, uh, use the exclamation Hotfix command to learn more about our highlights. And uh, of course, stay tuned after this show for Legally Cute, a show about cute and cozy speedruns. And of course, Frame Fatale's Game of the Month Showcase starts tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern and will continue Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern. But for now, we've got more Bloodborne and Goes on Ghost has the latter half of this all bosses run still uh, to complete here. So. Ghost and Artie, take it away whenever you're ready. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. Good Let's go. Very well. So now that Ghost has completed any percent, he has a lot of options open to the table. Um, there's a lot of side bosses she needs to kill in base game, which she can do in pretty much any order. Um, whatever is her preference. Yeah, so and the then, first thing I'm doing is getting the uh, Kane Her Summons and Final Umbilical Cord. Nice. That's a good... And don't forget to pop the cords. <laughs> oh, God. That's all I need. Yeah. You have done that a few times before, right? The worst time I'd, I'd ever done it on a no-hit run, I did it on a speed run that I was like seven minutes ahead on. <laughs> I've done it and I had to from practice before. It was really painful. So those on the war, I explained it, it earlier. Um for you to fight the final boss in the game, the true final boss or a secret final boss. You need to pop three items, which are a third umbilical cord. Um, you have four of them in the game. You only need to pop three of them, and then you'll be able to see the final boss. So what what happens sometimes, if you're unaware or if you're just not paying enough attention, you might forget to pop one of the cards and. You're, like, you're gonna be expecting the boss to spawn and instead you just get another ending. <laughs> and you lock yourself out of the uh, new game file. So I, I asked this question in the break because I was curious, but uh, I think it, it probably bears worth repeating. Uh, but I asked Artie and Ghost how it was any percent if they hadn't beat uh, what is what is his name, the guy? Garman. Garman, thank you. How it was any percent if they hadn't beat Garman yet? Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I would love to hear that answer for chat to hear it as well. Yeah, the reason is because 
he'll give you the option to to submit your life to him to, and so he can kill you and end the hunter's dream and you can agree to do that and that will secure an ending so in that respect wet nurse is, can be the final boss of your of, of the playthrough and then some people like to joke that you're getting hit in that cutscene <laughs> But it doesn't count. It obviously doesn't count. You cannot control your character. It's just a cinematic. But yeah, in that ending, German cuts your head off. And some people like to joke around and say, hey, I got hit. But it, it, it doesn't really count. But here Ghost got the King Her Summons, which unlocks a secret area kind of it's it's if you're just doing a first playthrough and you're playing um through the game without searching up stuff um you're very likely not gonna find this area it's very hard to find um but yeah kinghurst has one of the hardest bosses i would say Lagarius, for a hitless run a lot of people have trouble with him, but thankfully he, the fight is really short. He's a fight that goes like perfectly well or just awry. Yeah. And she also got the final umbilical cord right there from killing Yosefka. So or... which, which umbilical cord do you all choose to skip? That is which the one you... with um, Ariana, so oh, okay. you... Where the fuck am I going? Oh, there we go. Yeah, so with Ariana, you have to go to a specific house which is guarded by many enemies. You have to talk to her, go through a lot of dialogue, and then get her to go to the church, and then you have to progress the game enough for her to get pregnant from an alien and move to the sewers and then you kill her for the umbilical cord. So the game is pretty gruesome. <laughs> it's <laughs> kind of messed up, but yeah, that's that's how the quest line goes. So we choose to avoid that because it takes much longer than just killing Yosefka and all the other umbilical cords that we get. Now Ghost is going to the hardest boss in the game. It's I don't want to jinx the run, but there's like 90% chance she's going to get hit here. This boss is nearly impossible. We call him the, the Celtic Beast. And it's... Oh, it's so hard. Such a hard boss. So people are asking how the run is going time-wise. The point of this run is not the time. Uh, challenger approaching is rarely about the time. It's mostly just about completing the challenge. So hitless runs aren't really measured on time, uh, though Ghost is still going quite fast. You're ready, because this boss is... Oh, it's going to knock your socks off. So I, you off I will often get the question why you don't fight Cleric Beast. Uh, first, and that is the reason why. <laughs> you almost got hit there. That was really close, but very close. Well played. Well played. You aimed your attacks very well there. I actually did, and I should have, I should have <laughs> killed him in five hits. Yeah. Survived with one HP. It's so funny, like, ugh, Cleric Beast. This is actually the first Soulsborne game I ever played. I played this one prior to playing all three Dark Souls. And so Cleric Beast was the first, like, Soulsborne boss I ever played. And it was so hard. <laughs> yeah. And nowadays, you know, I'm, I'm f like 50 hours into Elden Ring. I feel like if I played Cleric Beast now, it'd be a walk in the park. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's both a little frustrating, but also very satisfying to watch Cleric Beast get demolished like that in, in a room oh, yeah. like this. Definitely. Because you you remember all the times you struggled with the boss 
and then you realize it just dies in five hits if you come back a little later. Ghost, that stopping on that door was so scary. <laughs> I've never seen anyone do that before. Stopping it in, in the doorway? Yeah. Oh my god. I... But good job. <laughs> we'll count that as just one hit. Oh! Dude. Yeah, that's unfortunate. So, what happened here is... I messed up my routing a little bit, so... Yeah. Ghost just missed the attack. And she got hit multiple times in the roll. And for that reason, when it comes to hit those fronts and the rules and what else, we don't count multiple hits in the roll as like four or five hits. We just count them as one. Because after she took the first hit there, she got staggered by the fire and it was pretty much impossible for her to avoid the, the next hit. So if you don't have control of your character, you can't really count it as a hit. It also like functionally doesn't matter, right? Like once you have one hit, the run is no longer hitless, so it doesn't really matter for any reason other than your own how many hits yeah, it is. It, yeah. It matters for personal best runs. Right, so but not for people, like the yeah. leaderboard since all the top yeah, no, have no. no hits. Yeah, but that's the way we do it in tournaments as well. So sometimes we have hitless tournaments over at Team Hitless and like two or three or even four players will be doing hitless against each other. And if they get hit by multiple attacks like this, we just count it as one to make it fair. So I'm about to try to pull off like, like one of the only skips you're allowed to do in this game and it's also like really hard to pull off with the cleaver. Yeah. So we allow this skip. It's one of the skips there I was talking about earlier. There's an enemy very close to this door and you can hit him through the wall. As I said, we are not sure if this is intentional by the devs or not, but yeah, well, if he's there, we might as well do it. Yeah, I feel like we got to congratulate Ghost on making it an hour in without taking a hit in a showcase format and on the GDQ stage, no less. Uh, so let's let's definitely get some respect in chat for uh, Ghost on Ghost putting on an incredible performance. And there's still so much gameplay left. And this has been incredibly well played, very aggressive and fast threats which is people usually see hitless as you know very safe very slow very methodical but this is showcasing how you can still go fast and aggressive while still playing well enough to not get hit and also, also i'm just very thankful i just didn't straight up die by that guy yeah <laughs> I came very close. And there was also the enemy behind you. Yeah, that was just yeah. fun all around. So this is yet another gank, gank fight boss. Um, all in all, it's not too bad. This boss has barely any HP at all. So you can just mech them down to death. She's gonna wait for those enemies to come up. Um, I believe there are eight enemies in this arena. So five of them chase you around the arena. One of them is the real boss and two of them um, protect the boss. They are like bodyguards. Oh, one of them fell down. That's not very yeah. good. But it, sh it should still be fine. So there's the two bodyguards and the actual boss, and the guy who fell down. And now Ghost is just left with the real boss. Um, and she has to kill him before phase transition. Or, yeah, let the transition happen and then kill him. Very well played. There's a few ways for you to go about this fight, but all of the strats are very valid. I would like to 
whatever, call out the developers for the fact that if you want to fight the daughter of the cosmos or whatever, you have to jump through the window. That is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I, could not, I could not find this boss in my casual playthrough. I'd played like every boss and I just was like, where, what, where? I know there's one more. Yeah, so many people might have missed the, this boss. So hey, if you if you've never seen this boss before, go back to Bloodborne and jump through the window, and you're gonna be able to fight this mon monstrosity right here. Um, you're you're not gonna see much of a fight here. Um, here the boss AI goes online, the health bar shows up, so Ghost gets a stagger immediately. And the fight is basically over. This is a scripted fight. Very well played. You could see Ghost did an R1 and an L1. She did two hits to the tentacles before the boss woke up. Um, that's because while the boss does not take damage before it wakes up, it's still... Um, damage to the limbs still count. So you have to do certain amounts of damage to limbs for them to break. She was basically just preparing that um, to break the limp as fast as possible here. Um, there, as soon as the boss wake, woke up. And now we're going to the DLC. Um, you might think that's a hit. That does not count as a hit because it's scripted. Is the only way to get into the DLC. And I'm not sure if you're going to, are you just going to run through or are you going to do the whole DLC now, Ghost? Uh, we're just getting the lamp. Okay, okay. Makes some routings slightly more optimized. Very well, yeah, but... very well thought out. She is, for some reason, talking to the doll which is unusual. <laughs> no, 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 doll no. doll gets to live in this one. <laughs> I will not, I, I do, I will not, the doll hatred is not allowed, not on my show. I've seen some people say the doll is evil, man. It's, Are it's you just not true, it's not true. Let her live like that? But yeah, um, the reason a lot of runners, probably most runners, um, kill the doll is because it's faster, basically. Um, there's a lot of dialogue you have to go through every time you want to you want to level up. So if you just kill her every time, the animation is much faster, and you can just level up um, without much hassle. Now we've seen this area before, but. Ghost has to go through it again in order to go to the bottom half of this area. So she's going to the first floor. Here's Patches, um, everyone's best friend. And yes, it's the same Patches from the Dark Souls series and every FromSoft game, basically. And he's a spider now. Ghost decided to skip his dialogue, but if you talk to him, he gives you a stamina room, which is fairly useful. But definitely not necessary. So here on the first floor, she goes through this door and we're going to the Nightmare Frontier, which has yet another boss. So throughout the game, we've seen multiple of those giant scary spiders, right? Um, including Yahargul, we've seen a lot of, a lot of those enemies um, on top of buildings and stuff. Um, if you have more than 20 inside, I don't remember if it's 15, I think it's 15, right, Ghost? Um, for what? If, if you have more than 15 inside, you can see Amygdala. Um, oh, it's actually 40. 40? Okay. Yeah. 15 is just extra attacks from enemies, right? Yeah, for like you, I think it's you can see like the red aura on one yeah. of those servants is like uh, crosses and 
the one of the church servants will have a little AOE attack now. Yeah, exactly. So if you have over 40 insight, you can see the boss that is coming up right now. You can see his family, I guess, um, throughout the the game. And after you go through Yahargo, you can see a lot of them there as well. So this is Amygdala. Also a very hard boss. This is going to be like a 15 minute fight, I think. Um, as you can see, she dealt no damage there, but then... Yeah, I don't know what happened. I think... Game glitched. Yeah, the game probably glitched. This is supposed to be a 20 minute boss fight. But well played. <laughs> So that's... Is that all All of base game bosses? Nope, we oh, still have got no, yeah, Hemlick and Lugarius. And, yep, yep. and also Garamoon, but that'll be after uh, DLC. After DLC, okay. So now we're going... We're gonna go through... What is... Um, Maybe the worst area in Hitless. Um, a lot of runners absolutely hate this area. It, it's 100% safe if you do the proper strats. But it's very tricky to learn. There's a lot of enemies placed in very bad places. Um, Bronsoft really took the, their time to place the enemies in as much of a troll way as possible. So there are enemies hidden behind alleys, enemies in dark places, there are enemies hidden behind walls that can hit you right as you go through. But since we know where all of them are, it, it should be fine. And this is Hamwick. Also, personally, I think this is one of the best design areas in from software games when it comes to um, the setting in general. It's supposed to be a scary area and it really does that job um, very well done. Kanehurst, uh, Kanehurst Castle is one of my all-time favorite FromSoft areas. It's a really good one as well, for sure. I remember the first time I went through Hemwick, I was just getting chills all the time. It's, it's a very a spooky, scary place. It's a spooky place. Yeah. Um, there's one item I think I never explained throughout the run, but we've seen it multiple times. The Pungent Blood Cocktail. Um, if you've played Dark Souls, you're gonna know this as the Alarming Skull. If you haven't played Dark Souls, what this item does is basically, when you throw it, it's it's like a Molotov um, bottle, right? So when you throw it into uh, any place, wherever it lands, enemies will be attracted to that place. Because basically they smell the blood coming out of it, and they get attracted to that, and they forget about you. So it's a very useful item for Hitless. It doesn't work on en every enemy in the game, but it, it it's still very, very useful. I waited so a little here. while before going up the staircase because if the dog is on the staircase, there he can actually. There, this game is a little weird with like elevation like he actually can step on me and stagger me just by being off the ground for like a centimeter yeah that was a good call whoo that scared me oh <laughs> nice so these are Oh, kind of wow, unique enemies of in the sense that you can stagger them by rolling into them so you can cancel their attacks 
and stuff like that. Which is what happened right there. So she killed the executioners there because she's gonna have to go back to that plaza later after the boss. And kill this one because he actually chases you all the way to the boss fight. If you leave him alive. And here's one of the worst enemies, enemy groups I guess, in the game. There are three witches coming down. And you have to kill, deal with them in order to go to the boss. Um, two of them do melee attacks and one of them throws molotovs at you while they're attacking you. And it's just... Yeah, kind of messed up. Oh, that's not good. What is Ghost this? has... Yeah, missed. Oh. Yeah, so Ghost has throwing knives here, and the purpose of the throwing knives is to be able to kill these witches before they get to her. Um, there's still one alive. Um, we'll see. Oh, she just forgot about Ghost, I guess. <laughs> yeah, sometimes they don't always do it, but most of the time they will just de-aggro. Very nice. And there's also a good reason there for you to have killed the execution before him. If they were still there, you're, you would have to deal with a lot of enemies at once. This is Witch of Hamwick. Um, I don't think many people struggle with this boss in a casual playthrough, but some memes can happen. And if you're one of those people who struggle with this boss, you can go out of the fight, go back to the Hunter's Dream, and sell all of your insight, or rather buy stuff with insight. Because if you go back to the fight with zero insight, um, they're not gonna spawn those enemies, the mad ones. So you only have to deal with the two witches and no one else. And that's a GG, that was very clean. Well done. Thank you. I think one reason why the boss felt easy in casual playthrough as well, not just because it is easy, but also because I feel like I came here pretty late. Like I didn't I didn't explore this area very fully in my casual playthrough until I had already beaten Mikalash. Yeah, and that makes sense because, as I said before, this is a very intimidating area. So most people will probably walk into this area and be like, nope, um, let me go elsewhere. <laughs> so they only remember this area very late into the game, and then the boss just rolls over and die. Best area? Uh, one of the best. <laughs> I'm just I'm a it pushover a... for snow levels and castles, so this is kind of a uh, oh, yeah. a combination. Yeah. <laughs> well, Fronsoft really likes snow areas. Yes. I don't think maybe Yeah, I don't think Demon Souls has any snow, but it was it was supposed to, but <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> We, we don't talk about the Archstone incident. Well, there's also, there's no shortage of beautiful gothic castles in FromSoft games. Yeah, absolutely. Like, uh, you know, between Drang Lake and uh, Irithil, Irithil? Yeah. I've got, you know, two of my favorite video game areas of all time. Absolutely. Oh, and, and Orlando, obviously. Yeah, and Orlando is so fun. I love the... Arrow guys and all right. Well, yeah, the, I, could, the do, I could do gardens. without. I could do without the arrow guys. <laughs> I meant more than, strictly speaking, the architecture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's absolutely amazing. So here, a ghost uses a blue elixir, goes through a very specific path to avoid. Um, not the ghost ladies, but mostly this guy. Um, this guy can be a little bit of a pain to runners. 
because he can shoot darts at you at incredible speeds and it's very hard to dodge. But she just shoots him because it knocks him down and now it's 100% safe to go through. He can shoot you as you go up this ladder, for example. Oh but yeah. That's why it's very important to shoot him down. I'm gonna play this. This is very rare to get hit, get grabbed by the gargoyle here, but it can happen. <laughs> yeah. Oh, a blue elixir here. Interesting. Again, Playing very, like, very extremely safe. rare, but yeah. it's GDQ luck. <laughs> well, it, it would make up for a good job. You got hit by it. I've gotten hit by it either <laughs> once or twice. It's yeah, very alarming. Which I do want these marks. Okay, so we're going to Martyr Logarius. Definitely a very hard boss. Um, but well, as Ghost said earlier, it's either one of the easiest bosses or one of the hardest. It depends on what luck he wants to give you. We'll see. So the goal is to run up to him as fast as possible. And, well, a melee attack is a good time. Very good RNG here. Very nice. So this will be a one cycle. Just backstab him during the transition, and that's it. Lagarus is dead. So this is what I mean. He's either one of the easiest bosses or one of the hardest. You you talked about GDQ RNG. I, I think that was a that was a good. very good one. <laughs> Farewell, good hunt. And for those who don't know what happened there in the transition, when you backstab or bury an enemy, um, you're gonna be able to deal double damage to them as they are laying down. So basically, when you parry an enemy, you can take a visceral, right? Because the enemy will be on his knees or something. And the same happens with backstabs. If you choose to not take the visceral boy instead hit him, you're gonna deal double damage. And that's what Ghost did right there. She did a, a charge R2 to the back, which is a backstab. And then she did another charge R2, which dealt double damage for an insane combo, basically. As you could see, like it, it took off half of his health bar at once. There's the <laughs> the glitched building right there. For some reason, it does not have collision. Um, so you could see Ghost threw a pungent blood cocktail there, but it just went right through the wall. That is very new to me, Ghost. Can you explain what you just did? That, that was very cool. So. It's a play on the normal speedrun strat, where you also like slip past the executioner. But what I like to do is just do a, it was actually a little off because I got trapped behind one of the, this dude. Got trapped behind one of the beasts, so I messed up with the timing. But what I like to do is like shoot a gun shot here to get these guys to like stop around here so that I can be in the front of the doorway for like a couple actually it's probably less than a second but a second or two without them being on without them like having being at risk of attacking me and what should happen is you should be able to sneak past oh god that's stand management 
Yeah, this is very scary if you don't pay attention to the sand. Nice. What I've been oh. told is that you should be able to slip past the executioner because it because um it's a delay in his AI every time. Yeah. If you go through at the right time, yeah. But uh, yeah, the the shot to get the attention from the enemies was very interesting. I don't no, this, this guy, you just gotta wait. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you agree, Ghost, but I, I think we can say almost objectively this is like the hardest area in the run. I think it's the hardest area, yeah. There's a lot of enemies, um, dangerous enemies at that, very aggressive ones there, like these dogs. Even with pungent blood cocktails, they don't stop moving around, so it's really hard to hit them. Very well done. And now this... This is the, the dreaded um, ladder hunter. Okay, let's... There hope he doesn't are... aggro too much further. Yeah. Oh, okay, I think we're good. Sometimes he'll follow you all Very the way nice. over here. Mm-hmm. So there, oh, okay, he's, he's not doing anything, that's fine. Very nice. So there are a lot of crows here, and there's the, that hunter. If you just run through and you try to go up the ladder, he's pretty much always gonna shoot you, unless yeah. you get very lucky. And so like we have to do this very specific strategy to avoid um, getting hit from his shot behind your back. Like, absurdly lucky, like, I've... I, like, it's never not happened to me. I think I've gotten through there, like, once or twice. Just going YOLO. I'm gonna and take it just hit. a little bit safe and make sure and you get the lamp here. Because I do not have the yeah. resources to run through here if I get bad luck on... Uh, yeah, that's a very good call. So this is a personal favorite of mine. I really love this boss. I I think most people probably enjoy him. Um, it's Ludwig. But unfortunately in this run we won't see much of him. Because it's so late into the game, Ghost is really strong right now. So there we go, an immediate stagger. Another stagger, and he's taking more damage there because his limb is broken. That is also a mechanic. <clears throat> and now the spit. Another hit to the head. I am actually impressed that that's not phase two. I was impressed too. I was fully expecting it. Yeah. Now, if all goes well, this phase should not last very long. There's an AI loop with this boss, where you can just go from side to side and he's always going to repeat the same attacks. But yeah, he, go he goes down and now the Visceral should almost kill him. He's going to do a scripted attack now, the Moonlight Wave. You just outspace the, the AOE and then run into him. And that's the fight. Very good job. Um, that was not really a textbook Ludwig. It, it's usually a little bit faster. Um, but that was a weird phase one where he didn't transition. Yeah, that was like... I feel like I could have shot him and it would have, would have started phase two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was so close. You would just run through the... Two hunters that are there. Ghost backstep there. For what reason, Ghost? Uh, to send the elevator down, so when I mark back here, the elevator will already be down for uh, a cool little bit of parkour later. Yeah. I personally hate it, but... <laughs> 
<laughs> I've lost many runs to them. But yeah, it, it's pretty much the best way to pick up the key that you're supposed to pick up there. I think people <clears throat> have asked this a few times, so I feel I'll just address it out loud instead of just in chat. Um, yes, uh, there is a tiny amount of delay for commentary for RD and I behind the gameplay, but this is just how it is. Um, but uh, we're, we're conversing with Ghost in real time. But our, our voices are merely time traveling to be slightly behind, you know, future time. Yeah. I'm actually speaking at the right time. I am purposefully um, delaying my voice just to mess with you guys. <laughs> we do a little bit of trolling. <laughs> that is that is the second show I have done in the last week where that has been said by a guest. That is so funny. <laughs> have you seen the gifts? Uh, yes, just of course. Yeah, it's, it's so funny. So here, Ghost kills the... Um... I guess patients? Yeah, yeah they're I like kill them so that you don't people. take... It doesn't take forever for the Gatling gun guy to kill him. Yeah. And then... You, you didn't shoot the Gatling gun guy, did you? No, I, if I time it right, I should have a blue elixir to run past him. And there okay. is actually a, it's very, it's only happened to me once, but the, he can glitch out and just immediately shoot you if you shoot him. Well, well, yeah, a lot of people, when going through that staircase, um, they shoot the, the Gatling gun guy, the machine gun guy, so that it staggers him and he doesn't, like, it takes a little longer for him to shoot you. But it's a little bit safer. Kills the rat there, um, and pulls the lever, and this will be bring the whole area up, basically the staircases and stuff, which will allow Ghost to get to the next boss. And now it's time for Chad to make the classic joke. Um, oh yeah, almost time. If you have, e yeah. If you have ever streamed Bloodborne, or if you have ever been to a Bloodborne stream, and the streamer is fighting this boss, you have seen this classic joke. Um, I'll make the joke myself when we see it. Very nice, no memes there. Nope. There are so many memes that can happen here. You can yeah. get a stored roll, which means you can't roll out of the fall. Um, you can get one of the motion gestures that we talked about earlier. So, Surprisingly enough, that has not happened to me yet. I kind of forgot that oh, that could be a thing. That has happened to me a few times, actually. But yeah, I hope chat is ready to laugh at my amazing joke that is coming up. I can't wait. <laughs> but yeah, Ghost also, just to explain what she did there, she was picking up a key item to be able to fight Lawrence later into the run. Now she's gonna fight a boss. I wonder what this boss is. A living failure? Wow, that is literally me. Ha ha. <laughs> ha ha ha. <laughs> ha ha. Any, any failures in chat? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, jokes aside, this is a very tricky boss for Hitless. Um, as is most... Most gank fights. Right. This is very bad RNG. You're supposed to kill this enemy repeatedly as he spawns. Oh, um, but she got 
um, an attack there at work. It, it just means she can't keep doing it. So, fairly bad RNG. But yeah, she saved this, it. This guy's being a bit aggro too. Yep. He still has the loop, which is fine. Unfortunately, that second guy is being a bit of a pain. He has to rebuff now. Oh, and the uh, famous meteor attack is coming up. If you hide behind the tree, you will pretty much never get hit here. But you have to hide behind a very specific spot. You can also run to the door to Maria. That is also a safe place. So now they broke out of the loop where Ghost was killing the enemy as, as he spawned. Um, and now she has to fight all four of them at the same time. But she, they were pretty low, so it was still a pretty fast fight. Very good job. I'd like to nice. give a shout out really quick to, first of all, excellent fight. But there's yeah. a, a chat here that says, nobody in chat is a failure. The point of life is to be alive, so you're all killing it. I'd like to retweet that. Everybody yeah, in chat the... is a winner. Hell yeah. Let's go. Very nice comment. Now, this is... Remember when I said Shadows of Yarna are one of the top three hardest bosses in the game? Um, this boss also enters the top three, in my opinion. Very fast-paced fight, very tricky to learn. Um, the hitless threat is kind of specific. But Ghost is going ham here. Ghost is just not going to try to do any strats. She's just going for the normal fight. Um, so we're actually seeing phase two. Um, I believe we're not gonna see phase three. Yeah. <laughs> the damage was so high that it didn't really matter that much. Um, we still skipped phase three. That uh, was, sick. was very Yeah, very well played. Very nice backstep there in phase two. Thank you. So what? most runners do is they skip both phase 2 and phase 3 because as you could see there the the transition animation is pretty long you can hit her like four, three to four times maybe even five if you're quick enough so they get maria pretty low she starts transitioning very late and then you just hit her um as she's transitioning in phase two and then once she once she's done she immediately starts transitioning to phase three and you can kill her then and there this is it's, uh, are you ready for my dumb joke yeah this area is totally me when i i i catch sea life for a living and i love shakespeare Maybe I even play the titular role in a show about a prince whose father is killed. I am fishing Hamlet. Oh my god. And that's uh, that's my joke. That's my joke. That's actually, yeah, that's actually the secret version of the book. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, it's, it's, it's yeah. yeah, a version of Hamlet where he's a fisherman and not- He was a fisherman. Not a prince. <laughs> It was the early access version. Early access play. <laughs> now, this area is a little specific. Ghost has to kill these enemies with staffs. Staves, I think, right? Staves, yeah. Plural. Yeah, so she has to kill the enemies with staves because as you will see here, she's going to fall down this little hole with the ladder. And sometimes you, for some reason, you can't roll as you fall. And those enemies, they hit you with lightning that comes straight from the sky. So if you get a start roll there and you can't roll away, 
Um, your character will be locked in place for like a second or two and you can get hit there by the lightning if you don't kill them. Rose is not getting the shortcut, she is going straight to Orphan. Um, one of the most famous bosses in the game, maybe even the series. Often considered the hardest boss in the series by many people. So we'll see how this goes. Very nice graves into a really good backstab. Orphan is backing out. Um, I prefer when he's aggressive, personally. I don't like when he backs off. Um, nice dodge into another awesome backstab. Once again, he backed off. And he's, he's being very passive right now. Which some people might consider good. Um, I think it's a little bit trickier when he's being passive. That's the big combo. You can strafe that into a backstab. Very well done. All right. And he's doing it again. Very nice. Nice. That should be the fight. GG. Well done, Ghost. Thank you. That was very clean. Unfortunately, we didn't see phase two. Um, but. It, it, it happens. And fun fact, as you could see there, if you kill Orphan in phase one, he just stands there. Never goes away. It doesn't remember, have a, a death animation. Remember to consume the umbilical cords if you haven't already. Oh yeah, I did <laughs> that right before... Uh, right before uh, Upper Cathedral Ward, actually. I got... I, I was just, I'm getting nervous. <laughs> Now, we're going to the last boss in the DLC. Um, he can be fought early, but for logistics, I guess, we just do him as the last boss because it's faster. So, Lawrence is... Remember when I said Cleric Beast was the hardest boss in the game? Oh, well, we are about to see Cleric Beast again, but harder and on fire and he poops lava as well so very exciting boss coming up i don't even know if we're gonna see phase three but if i know ghost well enough i'm not sure if she's gonna go for speed or if she wants to flex her lawrence phase three skills that was weird ah oh, damn oh unfortunately That's another hit. But keep in mind, two hits all the way through DLC, basically. It's, it's amazing. It's an amazing run. Oh, man. Oh, didn't get the stagger, so... Lawrence exploded on Ghost, and now she actually has to do the fight. Ah, fuck. All right. All good. Ah, the lingering hitbox. This is just uh, this is just drama. This is spicy drama for the uh, yeah for the chat room to to get excited about. Now we get to go get revenge. Yeah. So four hits total, but here here's the thing. Um, Lawrence is usually supposed to be a scripted fight. If you stagger him at the start, he will always go on the same loop of backing off and trying to do the big slam. And then you can just keep staggering him, breaking his legs, um, breaking his arms, and he's just gonna keep doing the loop. Unfortunately, um, Ghost missed a hit there at the start, which means he didn't stagger early, so she didn't get the, the loot. And after that was just, you know, bloodborne moment with the lingering hitboxes. All right, so if Loris is going to be different because we have to have to fight him. Yeah. So, yeah. Ghost actually has to fight him now. But 
you guys shouldn't be too worried. Ghost has quite a bit of experience with this boss. So we'll see how this goes now. This, this, as ADEF said, this is spicy drama. This should be cool. Very nice stagger to start the fight. Got a head break, so that's a visceral. A lot of damage already. So now Lawrence should be in phase two, which most people don't know about. Because casual players would usually just consider um, the phase where he loses half of his body as phase two. But at around 70% HP, he gets a few new moves. And that's what we challenge runners and speedrunners as well actually consider as the second phase. So now this is the third phase. He starts pooping lava, puking lava. It's a very disgusting boss. But um, very straightforward as long as you're aggressive. You have to stay close to him. The major mistake that most people make here in their first playthroughs is to try to stay far away from him. Because... GG Ghost. Oh, she decided not to kill him there. Nice. Nice. Okay, GG. Very well done. Um, the biggest mistake people can make is to get away from Lawrence. Because they are afraid of the crawling attack where he crawls onto you. Um, that is generally a bad idea because he will corner you and it's it's gonna be like undodgeable but if you stay close to him you can just strafe all of the crawling attacks so yet, yet again Lowborn showing up how playing aggressively is optimal yep. That was actually a far more exciting Lawrence fight than what would, would normally be seen. Exactly. So those hits came from for the, the greater good there. <laughs> that was a very good showcase of a Lawrence fight. Good luck with the last two bosses. Hell yeah, good luck with Yerman. Um Very hard boss. I don't think German is ever easy. Maybe on a playthrough with a lot of vitality, um, very high health bar. But in general, he, his moveset is very tricky to deal with. He deals quite a bit of damage. And the shotgun is just... Man, the shotgun is hard to deal with. But we'll see. Ghost is really good at Garen, so I'm expecting a very clean fight. Dodging all the shotgun, nice. Buffing again to be able to deal as much damage as possible during the phase transition. Oh, that was so quick. That was an unfortunate hit. Very quick attack. Now she's gonna go for a few transform attacks and a back. Very nice. A lot of damage dealt. And that's that's German. GG. Now just one boss left. So what attack actually counts as a hit, but people don't know if it counts as a hit already? Um, the AoE, which is very fun. It's a, it's a fun discussion. <laughs> so Moon Presence have a, a, has a scripted attack, which it, it, it'll always do at around 70 to 60% HP. It's, a, it's an AoE that is impossible to dodge. So, the, the strat here is, you're gonna see Ghost hitting 
Moon Presence's arm and the head. And the reason for this is to be able to stagger Moon Presence and just keep staggering over and over again. So she's gonna stagger by breaking the arm and she's gonna break the head, gonna do a visceral and finish the fight in one cycle before the boss can ever do the um, the AoE. But if you mess up the strategy or if you just don't have enough damage, you're gonna get hit by it. And unfortunately, it has to come as a hit. Someone in chat mentioned ghost um, blood apples, and that's very nice. <laughs> there we go, that's the strat. You break the arm, then you break the head, get a visceral, and bam, the Gee. boss is dead. Gee. Only five hits by my count? Yeah. Only five hits. That's better than my personal best. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, is, that, is, that, is that time? I am, yeah, checking to see what the, t yeah, what the yeah. end game time is. There's always obviously breaks and stuff like that. Still sub two hours. Very nice. Time the RTA seemed to be like, yeah, like 155 or something like that. Mm -hmm. GG. Well, Ghost, excellent work on the all bosses run. Please, everybody congratulate Ghost as well as please do remember to follow the runner. Twitch.tv slash goes on ghost. Now, gamers, we're going to go to a quick break, but this is not the end of Challenger approaching this evening, nor is it the end of the Bloodborne content. So right after this, we're going to go to a short break. Just everybody chill for a second. We're going to get up, stretch our legs, get some water, and then we'll be back with more Challenger approaching, and Goes on Ghost will be doing an interesting any percent hitless showcase here after the break. Don't go anywhere. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Games Done Quick Hot Fix. My name is Adef and this is Challenger Approaching. Tonight we have Bloodborne Hitless by Goes on Ghost. Uh, we just saw a wonderful all bosses hitless run. We, uh, there's only five total hits, which is pretty nutty. Uh, now we're going to an interesting any percent run, uh, but really quick, some announcements. Your subs, gift subs, prime gaming subs and bits help support weekly hot fix content and shows like Challenger Approaching. Please consider supporting our daily content if you enjoy these hot fix shows. If you have any ideas for your own shows or one-off events, feel free to go to gamesonquick.com slash hotfix to submit your ideas. And uh, that's it for the announcements. Goes on Ghost, take it away whenever you're ready. Uh, five, four, three, two, one. So yeah, I'm gonna, gonna do the Hunter's Axe now. A run I haven't done in a while, so let's hope I actually remember how to do it. Yeah. Was nobody listening to me before? <laughs> <laughs> Artie, Artie accidentally had his mic muted in, uh, in OBS. That's really funny. 
Oops, I muted myself. Yeah, I muted myself during the break. <laughs> I I did it on purpose. I was just trying to see if you guys would notice. Yeah, we wanted to see if anybody was actually paying attention. Exactly. But um, well, since I'm back, I, I might as well answer the question that was made in chat. Um, somebody asked, how much does the Hunter's Axe change the run? It basically changes the run um, honestly quite a lot. As we saw in the previous run, we can get a lot of um, scripted kills, where you just kill the boss before he ever does anything. Um, what if the Hunter asks? It's not really that good. I guess Ghost could talk more about it, but... It's, like, it's not a bad weapon, but it is, it's slower than the saw cleaver. Exactly. And... Oh, I just put on the saw cleaver. Well... <laughs> so, I do believe you can still get most of the scripted kills. You can probably still get a scripted kill on the media, for example. And... Um. Well, maybe if you go out of your way to get a plus six, right? Or something like that. Well, yeah, but we're not going to do a plus six for <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Amelia is going to be different. Shadows is going to be harder. Rom is very likely going to be harder. I'm, I'm not sure if you can one cycle Rom in this run. Um, and then Wonderborn should be about the same. Mikola should be a little bit more annoying and Wednerus should be about the same. It is interesting when you when you lay it all out like that, like when you name all the bosses, it's not very many that you have to do for any percent. It's just like uh, yeah, just eight. Absolutely not, yeah. There are a total of I believe eight bosses in Bloodborne in percent. Yep, just eight. So, how, yeah. how many optionals are there? Like 12? There are, well, if we are accounting DLC, then we have 22 total bosses in the game. So, so 8? Options. Yeah, exactly. Wow. So, Gascoigne should already be a little interesting. Again, I haven't actually used this weapon in a while, so. You can have to, like, remember everything off the fly. Yeah, the, there's a lot of people asking in chat what the differences are. Obviously, the weapon choice is the big difference, but the even bigger difference is that this is just any percent. So the goal is not all bosses. It's just beat all the required bosses and then get an ending as quickly as possible. Yeah. And since the question also came up in chat uh, about if this is glitchless, yes, this run is glitchless. So here, oh, Gascoin is also going to be different. I forgot to mention that one. Here is a very hilarious strategy. If you two hand the weapon and you do charge or twos, you're always going to knock him down. And it's it makes for a very funny strategy. Oh, what's that smell? You can basically kind of cheese him the sweet blood. by making him fall over, oh, over and over again. This is also sick. doable with Lady Maria in the DLC. <laughs> the range on the axe <laughs> is kind of nice, though. It is very nice. Um, there was a very funny scenario right there where Gascoin did the same attack as Ghost, but she actually hit him. And for those wondering, yes, Gascoin is using the Hunter Dex. It is the exact same one. Nice parry there. Oh, that Visceral threw him very far away. <laughs> yeah, I feel like just do that. <laughs> I feel like that was a bit unusual. <laughs> wow. Just yeet Gasling out of the arena. Oh, almost. Ghost, have you done Hitless with a lot of different weapons in any percent? I have, yeah. Have not done all of them? Probably. We'll most likely do that at some point. But I've definitely done it with a Hunter's Axe. 
Do you have a, a favorite weapon in the game? Personally, my favorite is the Kirkhammer. I just, I'm a sucker for like strength weapons that just utterly squash enemies. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say the Saw Spear. I was about to get very mad. <laughs> Hardy, what's your favorite? Um, mm, to be honest, I like messing around with the Whirligig Saw, but at the end of the day, I'm most experienced with the Saw Cleaver, and I just really love the openings with the Saw Cleaver. So, a very vanilla answer, I guess. Um, hey, my, my favorite is the most OP weapon in the game. <laughs> Yeah, we, we talked about this while you were away for a moment, but people in Bloodborne streams are like constantly like, why are you using the saw cleaver? Like, isn't it bad? It's the starting weapon, but like, it is so good. Yeah, it is by far the most powerful weapon in the game, honestly. I don't know if it's because I started with Bloodborne, but in like almost every Dark Souls game since, I'll use a secondary weapon that I'll use for like really hard fights, but I kind of like to just use the starting weapon for like the whole game. Like in Elden Ring, I chose Warrior and I'm still using a long sword. Yeah, I chose Warrior as well. Um, I used the long sword for a while. It's really good. Like if any weapon fully upgraded is gonna be like really boss. Yep, and then we still have power stances, which is really cool. Yes, getting the Dark Souls 2 power stances back is so good. Hell yeah. So, obligatory question that I ask anybody who comes on with a Soulsborne game. Uh, I'd like both of you to say your favorite and least favorite boss in the game and why. We'll start with, uh, we'll start with Ghost. Favorite boss is Vicar Amelia. I just, I love how, compli how complex she is and she has like, in my opinion, like next to no flaws. Like I think she's just generally one of them, a perfect boss. Least favorite boss, I think, is uh, Merciless Watchers from the Chalices, because I just think they're really cheap. I forgot um, about the Chalice Dungeon bosses. That adds yeah. a lot more bosses to the game. Yeah. I have, I have like, 1,500 hours in Bloodborne, and if you ask me to name Chalice bosses, I, <laughs> I'm going to know, like, five of them. <laughs> Take this. Um, as Party for myself, yours, yeah. Yeah, I would say my favorite boss is a toss between Orphan and Ludwig. Um, I, I really can't choose which one I like the most. But my least favorite boss... I Honestly, I guess I would have to say Moon Presence. Because it's, it's a boring fight to me. And it's... When you think about it, how it's the last boss and all that stuff, it's very underwhelming. In the casual play, I found Moon Presence kind of hard. I might have just been bad, but... <laughs> I think a, a, a big reason for that is the 1 HP attack. Um, oh, yeah. The big AoE that puts you at 1 HP. If you're not paying attention to that, and you don't heal immediately, you're very likely going to die very soon after that attack. So I guess that's why a lot of people actually have difficulty with the boss. I personally find it to be boring. Like, I don't like the moveset. And I also don't really like the 1 HP attack. Having an undodgeable move in a boss fight doesn't feel very nice to me. I think that's very fair. <laughs> yeah. And pro coming from somebody who plays Hitless, I imagine, even more so. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, no, you don't. I think Gascoigne might be one of my favorites only because I think his voice actor is tremendous. Um, his voice lines in the fight are so good. And also the lore behind the fight. Like, it's one of the few fights where the lore is pretty accessible. Like, even, that is if, you, true. even if you don't go to the wiki. <laughs> Because for a lot of the bosses, the lore is really cool, but like you're not gonna learn it if you don't go to the wiki. Um, but the lore for Gascoin is like pretty accessible, 
just through normal gameplay. Speaking of which, um, since you brought up the leaking, I'm not sure if you're aware, but I guess I'll use this as kind of a shout out. Um, there's a community driven wiki um, called bloodborne wiki.com, and it's they consult challenge runners, they consult general players of the community, PvPers, like everyone, in order to get their information as accurate as possible. And so if anyone in chat is playing through Bloodborne and you're looking for a good wiki, that would be 100% my recommendation. Yeah, the, the Bloodborne wiki is, is amazing. I, uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, when I was playing Bloodborne, I, I finished the game and then I broke up with my girlfriend of the time. <laughs> and so I was sad and had a ton of time on my hands. So I just dove into the Bloodborne wiki for like hours every day, just like, <laughs> because the, the, the story, the, the world in which the game takes place is so interesting. Um, and it's a shame that so much of it is hidden beneath the surface, but like a lot of the lore is really, really incredible. That is honestly very impressive how you try to look for it on your own instead of like reading other people's theories and stuff or or watching videos on it. Well, yeah, I eventually got to the point where I just watched Bloodborne lore videos, but yeah, <laughs> but at first my my goal was just like, you know, look stuff up on the wiki, look up item descriptions, stuff like that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Man. So we're seeing a little bit of a difference here with Let's Start Beast. Um, Ghost is doing the the knockdowns very frequently, which is also always a hilarious animation. Um, just seeing the boss get knocked down like a rag doll is it cracks me up. First time I saw this, I. <laughs> I couldn't believe it, how far the boss goes away. So sometimes Bloodstar Beast can be a little bit of a prick. He, he just keeps doing unpunishable attacks, um, jumping around the arena, running around. Um, so it can prolong the fight quite a bit. Especially when you're not using the Sock Cleaver. If you're using the Sock Cleaver, you can always make the fight very fast, very quick. But if you're using any other weapon, you have to use the three openings, I guess, that you can have in the fight. Well, four openings accounting for this AOE. And it's... Yeah, it's a bit of an annoying fight with off-meta weapons. Very nice. Yeah, that's a GG. Good fight. It's interesting, I feel like a lot of people who play Bloodborne after playing Dark Souls 1 and 2, like if you played them in release order, for example, you would play Dark Souls 1, 2, then Bloodborne, then Dark Souls 3, uh, as people did when they came out. Um, and I remember a lot of people were complaining about Bloodborne because of the speed, uh, because it's such a fast-paced game. But for me, since I played Bloodborne first, moving to Dark Souls 1 was kind of the opposite, but like in a good way. Um, like I enjoyed the slow pace of Dark Souls 1 and 2 after Bloodborne, and then Dark Souls 3, which is fast like Bloodborne is, I also really enjoyed. So I don't know if it was just that unique perspective of playing Bloodborne first, but I found all the games to like be a great speed in their own way. That is kind of funny because we have the exact opposite opinion. Um, like Bloodborne Dark Souls 1 was is my too slow. Yeah, 
Uh, Bloodborne was my first game. I absolutely loved it. And then I got into the Dark Souls 3 soundtrack. Believe it or not, that was how I wanted to play, um, how I got into wanting to play uh, Dark Souls 3. I listened to Gale's soundtrack and I was like, dude, this game must be awesome. I have to play this game. <laughs> um, so my second game in the series was Dark Souls 3. And after that, I was absolutely hooked to From Software games. So I bought DS2 because I'm on console. And at the time, Dark Souls Remaster was not a thing. So I, there was no DS1 for DS4. So I bought DS2, I played through DS2, I loved DS2. Um, actually, I kind of disliked DS2, then I did a challenge run. I did it at level 1. And when I played through DS2 at level 1, I started loving it. So a few months later, um, DS1 Remastered came out. I decided to buy it, of course, because, hey, everyone speaks such great things about the game. And it was so slow that I just, to this day, like, I, I beat the game twice. And I never touched it again. I don't know when I'm going to play it again, but it, it's definitely my least favorite. I think... I think uh, that you know that totally makes sense. Um, I don't know why, but the this, the difference in speed never really bothered me. For, you know, either Bloodborne being too fast or Dark Souls being too slow. Um, I kind of like them them all for their own reasons. Uh, I also oh, I, yeah. I, re I really like Dark Souls too. Um, it's not my favorite in the series, but I, I really enjoyed it. So um, some people might even get mad, like. Oh, he hates DS1, oh my god. But um, when I say I dislike DS1, it's like compared to the other Souls games. DS1 yeah. is, is still like a 9 out of 10. You yeah, know? Exactly. Okay, you just said exactly. <laughs> a friend of mine has this same take. Uh, his, his sort of thing is like, people always talk about Dark Souls 2 being so bad, but the reason is because they're comparing like an 8 out of 10 game to like a 10 out of 10 game. So by yeah. comparison, it, it seems bad, but compared to most games, it's still really, really good. Absolutely. Now Ghost is right up by um, Amelia once again. I'm very curious to see how this fight's gonna go. Ghost, you have a plus three, right? I do, yeah. Okay, okay. That's also why I was picking up uh, upgrade materials that I did not do in the uh, other run. Near the church giant, right? Yep. Yeah. So on the previous run, Ghost did this boss with a plus zero weapon because it's faster. And this run, to make the boss a little easier since he's using a worse weapon, she upgraded it to plus three. Um, at this point, you can even get it to plus four and equip it with a really good gem. But it, it would be maybe unnecessary and also much lower. So she's just going for it with the plus three. Let's see how it goes. Still getting the arm break at the start, very nice. And now, okay, so now this is Amelia. This is how the fight works. We didn't get to see the boss in the previous run. Because she died so fast. But hey, this is the moveset. And it's a really fun boss to fight with and to deal with. And a gentle reminder that this is Ghost's favorite boss in the game. So I guess I'll talk about a very specific mechanic that I believe most people do not know. Um, I think a lot of people may have noticed this mechanic just by playing through the game, but they never really figured out what was going on. Some, sometimes 
beast bosses like Amelia, Lawrence, Cleric Beast. Um, they get different follow-ups to their attacks. Um, seemingly random. Like, sometimes you can't tell why they're following up the attacks in such a different way. Especially since you're not really doing anything differently. And the reason for that is when you break their limbs, so for example, Ghost broke her arm at the start, and now she break, broke her leg and head. Um, whenever you break a limb, the boss will get different um, follow-ups to their combos. Like that slam to the ground right there. That was a different follow-up triggered by breaking her limbs. It's a very interesting mechanic that most people won't notice in their casual playthroughs, but it really adds a lot of depth, depth to the game, um, to the gameplay in general. So Amelia is in phase two. Ghost has to play a little bit aggressive to not allow her to heal, and that's a fight. Very nice. Nice. Very well played. Thank you. Now we're gonna go through Forbidden Woods, once again. Um, I believe we didn't talk much about Forbidden Woods in the previous run. I don't think we did, yeah. Yeah, Forbidden Woods is... Honestly... Probably one of the hardest areas for first playthrough. I think a lot of people get lost there. I know I did. There's um, also the, the big snakes that shoot the poison darts and the... The snakehead guys and the hunter in the dark tower thing. And yeah, then it all caps off with the hogs and the uh, shadows of Yarnum. It's a tough area, especially since it's only <laughs> like, you know, it's not even like yeah. midway through the game, really. Exactly. There's some of the hardest enemies in the game are in the area. Including, um, fun fact, if you go to a specific part of the area, you're even going to see Celestial Emissary, the blue alien boss. There are a few of them in that area for some reason that I still don't know <laughs> but yeah the enemy variety in Forbidden Woods is insane there's a lot of different stuff um, and you have to deal with them all properly in the first one. fortunately we have a very specific route where we avoid most of the enemies honestly and we just come here to pick up um, upgrade materials in order to get a plus six weapon. I am going to take a bit of a detour in this routing because I'm going to pick up an extra gem to increase the damage for uh, the axe that you couldn't do on a saw cleaver. Are you going to pick up the triangle and the poison stone? Yep. Very nice. Uh, and this is why... Go ahead, Artie. Oh, no, you can go ahead. I was just going to say really quick, I was going to reiterate that uh, uh, it's probably worth mentioning again, just for all the new people, uh, what counts as a hit. And I'd also like to say, please do follow Ghost on Twitch, twitch.tv slash goes on Ghost. Uh, she's a, a super talented Bloodborne uh, hitless player and challenge runner. So uh, please do check out the link. It's in the chat. Uh, and if you're on YouTube, it's in the description. And also follow RD2 as well, twitch.tv slash RD2, another Bloodborne player. Thanks for the shout. I appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, so first off, to recover my train of thought about, I was going to say, talk about different weapons. And this is why 
running the game with different weapons is really good. It gives you a lot of game knowledge and you can adapt to multiple routes. Ghost just picked up a gem that a lot of people probably don't, don't even know it exists, but it's so freaking good for this weapon specifically because it's a triangle gem and this weapon has a triangle gem slot. So, yeah. The also, does not, so it has a wing exactly. slot. Exactly. Awesome routing here by Ghost. And now to answer the question about what is a hit, um, environmental damage does not count as a hit, so that includes poison swamps, um, frenzy. What else is there in Bloodborne Ghost? Well, uh, running into bonfires, like yeah. right here, there's a bonfire. If you run into it, that does not count as a hit because it's a static element of the area, so it's count it counts as environmental damage. Yeah. Um, fall damage does not count as a hit either. Unless it and kills you, obviously. Unless it kills you, yes. So, what does count as a hit? Um, any damage or stagger coming from an enemy. So, if an enemy directly hits you and you get knocked off or knocked back or staggered in general, that will count as a hit even if you don't take damage. And if an enemy hits you and you explicitly take damage from it, then yes, that's a hit as well. And if you die, any death is a hit. If you ever die, if it's from fall damage, if it's from environmental damage, it doesn't matter, it, it's gonna count as a hit. I think that covers up most of the rules. There are specific rules depending on the game you're playing, but as for Bloodborne, that's mostly it. Oh, you got the same attack again. <laughs> I know. That's Lucky. pretty nice. Took him a little while to respond, though. hate it when he yeah. like, just sort of idles there and gets closer to you. I used to be really afraid of that enemy, and I would just kill him with throwing knives. Yeah, it's usually Nowadays. the go-to strat. Yeah, nowadays they just dodge him. The so ghost is just picking up some twin blood song shards. Um what about and the she's... dude that throws you in jail if you let him kill you? That um, is disallowed on no hit. So you can't go to um, Yargul slash Hypogee in jail early. Yeah, because you... So it's not exactly a scripted hit, right? Um, you can get to that area in by progressing through the game normally. So if you die to him, since it's not scripted, that counts as a hit. Very, very minor spoilers for Elden Ring real quick. <clears throat> um, but in Raya Lucaria, the enemy that like traps you and takes you to a different area, um, so many people on Twitter were like, a glitch, like I wrong warped to a different area. And I was like, you never played Bloodborne. <laughs> no, yeah. No. The second it happened, I was like, oh, it's like Hippoji and Gal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, you, you said the... You said the word. Uh, me and Ghost will have to correct you. Is it jail? It is it's actually jail. jail. It's like it's yep. uh, that's like confirmed. Old spelling just, of it. Is it like an old English spelling? It's yeah. old English, yeah. Wow, that makes a lot more sense because they do throw you in a jail. Yeah. <laughs> and then in Elden Ring, we also have the Ever Jail, right? Which, well, enemies are trapped inside. Also, a minor spot. Oh yeah, I was just there last night. I saw G A O L and I was like, "Oh my God, Bloodborne!" Yeah. <laughs> yep, it's pronounced J. -O. Farewell, good. All right, we are back to our favorite boss, Shadows. But it's weird that they, I don't know, that they chose to use that word. I guess it's just it, it reads cooler than just writing jail normally. 
I mean, are, 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 who are we to question why Miyazaki <laughs> names something the way he names it? Yeah. I mean, some of these boss names are, are really quite something. Miyazaki giveth. Man, Miyazaki taketh away. Yep. So, Ghost has a plus six weapon now. So, she should be fairly strong. But, reminder that this is still not as good as the Sock Cleaver. No matter how upgraded this weapon is, it is not as good as the Sock Cleaver. And we are about to head to Shadows of Yarna, which, as I said before, it's top three hardest boss in the game. And for any percent, it's by far the hardest boss in the game. You said it was, uh, I remember you pointing it out for Shadows and Maria. What was the third one? I said, what did I say? I think you never <laughs> said. I think you pointed out two of them, but never the third. No way. Oh yeah, for, for Hitless specifically. For Hitless specifically, I personally believe it's Shadows Maria and Moon Present. Yeah, that tracks. Mm-hmm. Now, plus side of using this weapon is that we have an amazing opener for Shadows. Good luck, have fun. Let's go. Now, is she gonna knock all three of them down? <laughs> the knockback that's, is that's always... That's great. It's so satisfying. That is a lot of damage, to be fair. On all three health bars. Four twenty-seven per hit. That's pretty decent. Unfortunately, it's not only about the damage; it's also about the speed. Um, so, this is a very hectic boss fight. It's very fast-paced, and when your hits are also slow, it just opens you up for more opportunities to get hit yourself. And this is why also the Sock Cleaver is so good, because it's such a fast weapon. You have almost no downtime between hits. You can press R1 and, and just roll away almost instantly. But with the Hunter Axe, you, every time you deal a hit, you, yeah, you're stuck there for a while. So you have to account that into every open that you take. Funny thing is, is, I think this fight went faster than, or first phase went faster than the Cleaver one. Yeah, I think so too. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Jinx. Oh, no Jinx. way. That was so unlucky. So usually what's supposed to happen is we, we deal the last hit to move them into phase two and all of them stagger at once. But in that particular case, it was a mix of, first of all, the, the flamethrower guy started the attack before Ghost could deal the hit. And she only noticed it after she hit the the, can the fireball guy. Which yeah, means, I didn't say it at all. Yeah, remember what I just said about the weapon being slower? So she was locked into the animation and she couldn't dodge away. That is super unfortunate. It's we'll count that as one hit in case you guys are wondering. Mm, sucks because we don't have the uh, advantage of the opening anymore. True. Yeah, that is true. So that first attack that Ghost knocked all three of them down. That. That is only possible on your first attempt at the boss. Um, from now on, she's gonna have to go through the fog door, which means the boss will activate much quicker and they will just split apart and you cannot do that again.
the honestly it's not even the hit or the death that is painful it's just the run back the run back to shadows is just yikes Is the run invalid because she got hit? Um, no. The way it works for events, or sometimes even for personal bass, the runners are chasing. If we get hit, we keep going. Just to see how far we get and how many hits we have by the end. But as for the leaderboards, as Ada I've mentioned before, yeah, the run is dead. Like, if it's not a zero hit run, it doesn't count as hitless. But we do... Let's did it again. We do get very excited for personal bests. The reach on this weapon is disgusting. <laughs> yeah, I find it better to uh, fight the shadows with this, but with transform mode. Like, the katana guy's like not even on screen and you hit him on the backswing. Some runners track their fewest hit runs. Yeah, because as far as hitless goes, um, you're never going to start a run and say, hey, I'm going to do hitless. And then you're, you're never going to restart the run after every hit and somehow get the run eventually. That would be not very good for practice. So what we do for practicing is... Oh, that's another unfortunate hit. So what we do for practice is we just go through the whole game over and over again and we keep counting the hits and as they go down we count them as personal best. So for example I have done Bloodborne Hitless. My first personal best was 16 hits through the game and then I just kept going down to 12, 7, 3 and eventually 0. And that's how we practice. If you would reset on every hit you take, it would probably take months to get to late game for the first time ever. Nice transition there. Oh, going for the visceral. Eh, two hits, we can be a little ballsy. Yeah. <laughs> Is this AI lock consistent? It looks like it is. It is. Yes. Oh. Oh, you stopped the... <laughs> Very you nice. You the snake attack. Very nice. You stopped it with the gunshot. I can get through the rest of the, f the game with only two vials. Oh, absolutely. Smile. Smile. But yeah, um, the worst is behind us. Shadows is most definitely the hardest boss in any percent. So getting through shadows with two hits is... Um, I know she got two shadows pretty fast and the run is like 30 minutes at, right now or something. But actually getting through them with zero hits, one hit, even two hits is mighty impressive. Because it's... Such a hard boss to hit with. And then I had to do the run back too, so yeah. I that on time. There's an interesting question in, in chat goes for you. Um, how many times do you think you have beaten Bloodborne? Like over a thousand times now. <laughs> <laughs> how many hours do we have in the game again? Like roughly 6,000 might be approaching seven now. 
Nice. According to that really stupid old adage or whatever that that one guy proposed, you uh, you won't be a master until you hit 10,000 hours. Oh, wow. So, uh, you're still 3,000 hours away from being any good. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm so, so sorry to bring this news to you. Unfortunately. Oh, I can dream. Unlucky. One of my favorite quirks about the ROM fight is the the animation the LOD on the little spiders as you like pan them away from the camera and they start moving like with less frames per second. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> now I do not. There is a a way to get like really good damage on ROM with the axe, like like optimize it, but I do not remember what it is. So. Let's see how this goes. You should probably do over half the health bar worth of damage here. Even with like a random combo, but we'll see. Very nice. Oh, getting good luck. Yeah, the backstabs here are actually good. Oh, nice. Wow, that Charger 2 dealt so much damage. And now we engage Sniper mode once again. This is, a, this is the reason I made sure I bought 10 Molotovs. Yeah. <laughs> Steph Curry from downtown. <laughs> Screw March Madness. I'm here for the uh, the Vacuous Rom bracket versus Old Hunter. Ah, <laughs> oh, fuck. Hit the head. Oh, yeah, so... Well, the head is actually a good point. We didn't bring it up yet. Um, Rom's head is basically an armor, so... Any hit that you deal to the head will deal like negligible damage compared to actually hitting the body. So even by throwing molotovs or fighting rum in general, you should always aim for the body and forget about the head. Hardy, I'm <laughs> I'm dying because. Uh, before this run started, you were like, yeah, I just, I feel like sometimes I won't know what to say because I, you know, English isn't my first language, so I won't have the vocabulary to, like, express. I'm like, oh, okay, I mean, your English seems fine. My man just said negligible. Like, he doesn't <laughs> know English that, come on, man. Your English is great. What are you talking about? <laughs> Thank you very much, dude. I appreciate it. <laughs> I, I, I guess it's just... Anyone who is a non-native English speaker is obligated to say sorry for bad Glendo every time, <laughs> you know. Um, so yeah, for those in chat unaware, I am Brazilian. I am not a native English speaker. Um, my mother tongue or language or whatever is Portuguese. So I hope I am being understandable. Very. <laughs> so picking up the same items here, going through basically the same path. Oh, I'm reading chat, and I'm, I'm just flattered right now. Um, I'm genuinely flattered. Thank you all very much. Good gameplay, great commentary. You know, if you watched only this episode of Challenger Approaching, you would think that this show is like 
just people come on and you know it's very normal and like a great showcase but in reality usually this show is super cursed <laughs> <laughs> I don't but, know, I've uh, been having some cursed luck today. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna do something I don't normally ever do, but I'm gonna grab these Molotov, these vials here. Oh, yeah, because you, yeah. Didn't roll. You could have grabbed the, the ones near the wolf after the 18% gem, right? I could have. But that's fine. Unfortunate hit there. First episode of Challenger approaching with no Martin Baseball in a long time. I'm sorry, did you say Martin Baseball? Is this when I'm supposed to bring up Martin Baseball? <laughs> <laughs> Nice pickup of the items there. Um, fun fact about that enemy, if you notice, he turns around and stuff. Um, you have to pick up the items in the order that he turns around, so you have to adapt on the fly. If you notice he's turning to the right, you go to the left. If you notice he's turning to the left, you go to the right. It's fairly simple, but could be a mistake that new runners could end up making. Got the good jam. Wait up behind the, the pillar to avoid the gunshot. I'm gonna be short one chunk, so I want to get to a plus eight. Oh, nice. Are you gonna come back to one run later then? Oh, no. Uh, this is for after. If I'm gonna oh, okay, okay, have okay. a plus seven for. Uh... Oh, shoot. They were still aggro. Can you introduce yourself in Portuguese? Um, yes. Oi, meu nome é Arte. E hoje estou fazendo comentário da GDQ. Espero que vocês estejam gostando. I, I like I understand just enough Portuguese that GDQ is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you caught that. Yeah. And another fun fact is how I actually pronounce my name differently in Portuguese. Yeah, and I English. caught that too. You said Argy or something to that yeah, effect. Yeah, Archie. Um, and it's also English, a function of like uh, the the T's in Portuguese are different. Absolutely, yeah. Very nice damage on the Bell Maidens here. Yep. Let's see how the the one reborn staggers go. This should be fine damage, but also it's such a slow weapon. Yeah, this is totally fine. Very nice. So here Ghost is just gonna break all the legs, and the boss will not move again until it's dead. Did you? It seemed like the the lightning animation there. It kind of seemed like you were hitting the wrong place and not the leg. I think I might have. Yeah. Yeah, that looked kind of weird. But you still got stagger, so that's fine. GG. Thank you. Two bosses to go. Yeah, I did not, uh, I did not figure, one of the reasons, you know, earlier people may have remembered that I said that I had to go back for One Reborn because I found it too hard uh, in my casual playthrough in 2019. Part of the reason for that was I did not know you could kill the witches. 
That was. Yeah. Not, I did not uh, know that either. I did not notice the foot, the the, the staircases <laughs> there. I didn't even really like. I, you know, I just assumed, oh, they're just a part of it, like, and uh, that made it vastly more difficult. I think I figured it out, but I didn't figure out the stun lock. So I actually had to fight the end, like all the phases and God, the boss is awful. If you're enjoying the game, if you're enjoying the run, if Bloodborne is your favorite game, which a lot of you have a feeling it might be, then uh, please go to twitch.tv slash goes on ghosts. Drop a follow. I also, you know, it's been a long time for me. I, I, I've been in the speedrunning game a very long time now. Almost, no, oh, a decade in June. Um, and it's not so often these days that I will still watch a run and be like, oh, I got to learn this speed run. But I got to be honest with you, this is the first time in a long time I'm watching Bloodborne any percent. I'm like, uh-oh, I got to <laughs> play this now. I get that a lot when people come into my stream. They're like, oh, man, I want to play Bloodborne now. Oh, well, the good news is, as far as Soulsborne speedrun go, I would say Bloodborne 80% is one of the most accessible ones for you to start learning. Oh yeah? Yeah, because as I said, it's eight bosses, right? It, it's pretty short, even glitchless. I think the glitchless world record for Bloodborne is like 30 minutes? Something, something, like, something like that, it's absurd. 20, 28 or 10, 29. For wow. glitchless, by the way. Wow. Um, glitch runs are even faster. I'll do, well, I'll do a fresh all bosses casual playthrough after I beat Elder. And then we'll, we'll yeah. reevaluate. Well, I guess I should give the Return to Yarnum event another shout out then. Um, if anyone just got through Elden Ring and you're starving for more, from software content. Um, the, the whole Bloodborne community is organizing an event called Return to Yarnum. And you're going to be able to play with people coming back to the game. So if you've never played Bloodborne again, uh, uh, never played Bloodborne before, or you just want to play it again, the next few weeks will be as good of a time as ever for you to get into it. The online community will be very active. Also, we're checking out Team Hitless and Speed Souls. Good, good. from Soft community resources for those people interested in challenge runs or speed runs of from Soft games. Bad luck on Edgar there. He used the Rose Marinus. Oh, wow! That is so unusual. Yeah, it's rare for me to do it, and it doesn't even always hit you. But of course, it did then. Yeah, it's the GDQ look. <laughs> The good news is Happens. you already technically did an any percent run hit list today, yeah. so, yeah. you know, this is all just bonus I did my, content. I did my time. Yes, exactly. It's still a win. This is an interesting question for both of you. Um, I haven't played it yet, but I am interested to try it. Have you tried the PS1 d -Mink? I have. It's, honestly, it's, like, just perfect. Like, I have, like, no criticisms for it. It's just an amazing fan, fan project. Oh, I gotta I have, try then. I have personally not played it yet because I'm on a. I play on console, as I said before, so my laptop is not really for gaming. I um, think you'll be I, fine, like. The, yeah, like, probably because it's a PS1 D make, right? <laughs> like, I really don't think it's that high of yeah. a. But, um, I would, I would yeah, give hopefully, it a shot. Yeah, hopefully I'll play it soon. I would want to stream it soon because it, it's probably. A very fun game to go through. What is it play? like the whole game? No, it's just the first area. Um, with well, twists, uh, uh, though. There's like yeah, some epic twists. content. Exactly. So it's only like a couple hours. Yeah, and the speed run is like 13 minutes. Okay. I think if you're going to through the game, like exploring as much as possible, you could probably dump like two or three hours into it. Uh, or, or, as far as I've heard, personally.
I think people tried to do Hitless in Bloodborne Demake as well. Not sure if it was accomplished yet, but... It does sound fun. And there, there's a funny hit on, on Mikolesh. Um, well, the hit is sad, but... She lived with, with 1 HP, and basically this will pretty much always happen, as long as she is not in the middle of an animation. Because if you're performing an animation and you get hit, you're gonna take counter damage, which is a mechanic in all of the Bronsoft games. And that would kill her for sure. But she, since she was just walking, she got hit and survived with like 1 HP. With this starting class, you're always going to survive that attack, as long as you're not in an animation. So, not sure how the plunge is going to go. Oh yeah, the plunge sounds... terrifying, honestly. YOLO. That's what we like to hear. <laughs> Oh, to be fair, this weapon does have more range than the baby, or it looks like. Ah, just barely missed him. Oh, so close. Now, if we get terrible luck on the drop, we could just we could just be dead. <laughs> yeah, Nikolaj is a bit of a funny guy sometimes. He can kill up attacks as you're falling down. Nice, she got fairly good RNG there. And this is Mikolaj phase 2, as it is supposed to be played. Very well played, good job. The lore for Mikolaj is so cool too. Just a great game. Yeah. It's a damn shame it's locked to one console. Yeah. I wish more people had the opportunity to play this, but it's okay, I guess. Well, worst case scenario, Blowbarn could just become another Demon Souls where a few years from now, um, we can, you know, um, emulate the game on PC, so... Who knows? Yeah, just have a supercomputer to uh, run it. Yes, you just gotta have, just gotta have a RTX 10,000 series. Yeah, I can't. Be able to play it. I, I can't wait for the. Uh, can't wait for the days when I'm gonna be like browsing Newegg. Like, oh man, these quantum GPUs are <laughs> never in stock. <laughs> yep. How many qubits does your <laughs> GPU have? <laughs> Where my where my quantum mechanics homies at? And then you're still gonna be playing Bloodborne in 30 FPS. Yeah, and I'll I'll buy this <laughs> quantum GPU just to play like Super Mario Brothers. Is Bloodborne no longer on PS Now? Um, I believe PS Now only has the base game. So there's no DLC. And I've heard from people who play with PS Now that there's a very terrible input delay when you're playing in, on PS Now. Since you're basically just streaming the game from a console, it's something like that. I don't know exactly how it PS works. PS Now blows. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've played I one or two games on PS Now, and I feel like I never had a positive experience. Yeah, so with that in mind, I, I would personally recommend just don't play the game. If it's if you're gonna play through 
PS now and have a bad experience with it, it's better to just save it for later. Yeah, I just, would, just I would recommend it if um, you do not have a console and you want to see if you would be, because I've had people ask, is it worth getting a console for Bloodborne? And that is one way to see if it is. You could also that you is know, true. just borrow a friend. If you have a friend who has a console, you could borrow theirs. Absolutely, yeah. Not gone are the days of borrowing consoles and games. You can still do it. Not yet, yeah. <laughs> Or boring games as well. Yeah. So long as they have the disc. Yeah. I bought my PS5 with the disc version, just in case. I have the uh, the downloaded version, unfortunately, for my PS4. Faster loads, though, I guess. True. The reach on this weapon, <laughs> it's just something else. It's, yep, it's kind of insane. Yeah, this is why I hesitate to call this a bad weapon. Like, it's just not the cleaver, in my opinion. And not being the cleaver is enough to put it, like, two tiers below. <laughs> That's just how good the cleaver is. Yeah, like, if I had to rank the weapons, like, saw cleaver and, and yes, saw spear are, like, in the S rank and everything else is, like, below it. Yeah, exactly. So... To settle the debate on Saw Spear versus Saw Cleaver, um, they're the same weapon. For those in chat wondering, the the only difference is Saw Spear scales with skill and Saw Cleaver scales with strength. And you might say, but already, dude, the the trick move set is different. It's a spear, um, and in reality, nobody uses the trick uh, move set. So it ends up being the same weapon. Now, if you do use the trick move set, then I guess the Saw Spear gets a little bit of an edge because it is a better move set. Then it's just about um, if you're doing a, a skill build or a strength build. Also, this is the last boss of any percent. So gamers, get your hype in the chat, get your follows after goes on ghosts, and let's get some uh, let's get some emotes going. Oh, that was a little faster than normal. Oh yeah, there's the lawnmower attack, by the way. The no, oh my god, that was was an insta lawnmower. I just was in the most lucky place possible. Oh my god. <laughs> there we have it, chat. We've seen it all. I'm I'm actually glad that you know everyone was able to see the instant lawnmower. That is the bane of every headless runner's existence. I know a lot of people who who beat the entire game without getting hit just to get to this boss and get hit by that glitched attack. That attack is a one hit PB machine. Nice bait. I really like this Rolling R2 moveset. Never really thought about it. Just a couple more attacks, chat.
E. B. E. e. There we go. This cold blood that is never used. As you uh, <laughs> as you go to the the final uh, cutscene here, Ghost, you have any final final thoughts? Um, I'm just really grateful to have been able to be on be on the channel. Yeah, of course. And Artie, from you? Um, yeah, I'm just happy to be here, dude. This was <laughs> extremely fun. Yeah, it was um, a blast. Yeah, these were great runs by Ghost. Um, I had a lot of fun commentating. Um, chat was great to all of us, and yeah, great times. I'm I'm just glad we could show Bloodborne to everyone, and hopefully get more people into these games. Amazing. I think time is technically now. I think that time is as soon as the cutscene starts. Okay, there you go. Uh, but regardless, gamers, thank you so much for watching. We're going to quickly sign off because there's another show after us and we're a little bit over. So I'd like to thank Goes on Ghost and Artie for joining me on Challenger Approaching this Friday. Uh, very quickly, uh, the next PB Precipice on Sunday, April 3rd, will be Ryan Ford showing off Link's Awakening. Uh, and then I have a super special Challenger Approaching in two weeks where we're going to be doing uh, Ocarina of Time Randomizer, where I will be guiding the runner with only Pictionary. Uh, oh. So that's going to be something else. Uh, but everybody, thank you so much for watching. First of all, Summer Game Sun Quick 2022 game submissions are now open until March 30th. You can find more information at gamesunquick.com. And if you're watching on YouTube, go to twitch.tv slash gamesunquick. If you're interested in looking at our live content starting weeknights at 7 p.m. Eastern and weekends at 1 p.m. Eastern. Frame Fatale's Game of the Month showcase starts tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern and will continue Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern. Right after this, we're going to have Legally Cute. Gamers, I've been ADEF. Thank you so much for watching. As always, there's more GDQ content coming up in just a moment, so don't go anywhere. But that's it for Challenger Approaching and Bloodborne for the evening. Take care.